the hell was that? What's up, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> what was what? I was barely, something? I barely made it back in time. I literally sat down like three seconds ago. Oh shit! They were taking. Oh fuck! I got home. They were taking bets, and I said, "Don't bet on eight o'clock." Taylor's pissing. Hold on. Something just like something loud. Just like what was that? I, I don't know. <laughs> My wife just. All I heard was something. It was like right when the podcast was starting. I hear something go, wham. Is there anything like on the ground out there? No? I don't know, dude. It was weird. Right right when the uh, podcast was about to start, like we were in the lobby or whatever in that wait, I heard like this, bam, like something loud right outside my door. And I was like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> I don't know. It sounded like somebody well, fell over. Just just as a like fair warning, I'm drinking a gallon of water a day now, and I have to use the bathroom like at least 30 times a day. So I'm, I'm pre-scheduling like six bathroom breaks. Just saying. Well, <laughs> I had like a very large brisket sandwich for dinner. And um, what else did I eat? Some chips, a soda, which I soda. So there's a potential I could have to, who knows? Could have butt pee in the middle of this thing. You never, you never uh, know what's going to, wow. that I'm amazed that actually hasn't happened to one of us yet. Being how long form these are. And they're like three hours. Like, what's the odd of somebody not catching a cramp? You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, has that I'm, ever happened to Joe Rogan's podcast in all the years of him recording that podcast three hours long? Has he never in the middle of the thing been like, I got to take a dump. Like, I got to. I got to go. I feel like it, he I feel like a normal person can hold it. Right? That depends. That depends. I've had some situations where there was no holding it. It, it was it was like. We're, it's we're going getting, to happen. We're getting straight into it tonight, folks. Just <laughs> straight to the well, butt pee. The, the, this, <laughs> this is the, the thing about only doing it every other week is it builds, right? But, yeah, just like butt pee, you know? You can tell. That's why I never understand people that say they don't know. You can tell. You're like, that is not safe. I need to be near a bathroom. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's a different kind of pressure. You're like, nope, that is not a safe situation. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Whiskey Knife Fight, everybody. Welcome. Just ripping the Band-Aid off. Well, that's the best way to do it. Let's be honest. It's true. It's true. Uh, let's let's knock this out quickly this time. What do you say? What's on the wrist? I already see it. I already know what it is. You got your Black Bay on. You got the Black Bay. You know, that's Old one thing. Finger. That's one thing I love about this watch is it's very recognizable. Oh yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like it's it's a very like there's no mistaking if you see that with the red bezel. It's like oh, it's a fucking black bag. I, yeah, like I have a quick story to tell. I nearly, very nearly fucked up. So I'm wearing my Christopher Ward, the C65 Trident GMT, and I was in my shop last week, and I moved my trailer into the shop, and I put the tent out. And I was just airing it out and I was working. I just wanted to lay down one day. So I went in there. I laid down in the tent. I'm like, oh, this is comfy. I took my watch off. I was hot, sweaty. And uh, as I'm getting out of the tent, I grab the watch. I didn't put it on my wrist. And I go to walk out and go down the ladder. And it flies out of my hand at like six feet in the air on a concrete floor. And it lands crystal down. And I'm just like, I don't want to touch. I don't want to look. <laughs> I don't want to look like it's done. It's done. I, I, I don't want to see it. I don't want to see it. And uh, I picked it up and it looked like there was a scratch on the crystal. And I'm just like, fuck. Dude, I've had Why? that. I've had Why? that heart jump a couple times, by the way, where I've like banged it on a door jam or something and looked and thought there was a scratch. And I'm like, oh, and then it like buffs right out. And you're like, oh, thank God. Well, no, I took my shirt and I buffed and I was like, shit, it's still there. And I just kept looking at it. I couldn't stop looking at it. I was like neurotic about it. <laughs> And then I was just like, I wonder. And I licked my finger and I rubbed it around and wiped it off and it was gone. And I'm like, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. <laughs> How? I, it fell crystal down onto cement from like six feet in the air. Well, that's the dangerous part about crystal, right? Is it's really good at scratch resistance, but it's hard. So it can crack. I wouldn't say easy, but it's susceptible to a hard hit could crack it, right? Yeah. So. Uh, seems to be keeping time. Everything seems good. And it really kind of like impressed me after that. I'm like, okay, dude, I'm, it, I'm cool with this. <laughs> if it takes a six foot hit to the, to solid concrete and it survives it, it's pretty good. 
Dude, it's I just, can't find a single scratch, not on the metal or anything, and I'm pretty sure it landed on the crystal. So, well, dude, that's like when when Pete banked one of his. I won't even say what kind of why. I don't know that Pete likes his business with his watch collection out on the streets. So I'm not going to get specific, but he banked a rather nice watch off of uh, something and put a big ass scratch in it, like in the band, like, like two days, after like he two got days it. after he got it, and he sent me the picture. I was like, oh, oh, it's not even my watch, and it, and it hurt my soul, and it wasn't even yeah, my watch. And yeah. I'm like, oh, oh god. It hurts so bad. What's, hurts. what's in the pocket today? You carrying the weird, same knife? No, I got a weird one today. Um, I actually have two. I've been carrying. I wouldn't say it a, it's a weird one, but it's. Uh, can you tell what it is yet? No, you're blurry. You're, you're such. You're such a watch guy. It looks like a Our, Protec. It is a Protec. Oh, horrible release. That was a horrible release. Malibu. Yo, Malibu. I could tell it was a Protec. The Malibu is poss possibly the most fidgety knife known to man it's very fidgety uh this one is also very fidgety i'm carrying the mini adamas today ah i've been seeing lots of pictures uh i think pete posted a couple of pictures and you posted a couple yeah. pictures of that knife and i tank, gotta say man. it's it's a it's a good looking knife man i like it it's a tank and the action because the blade is so thick and heavy it just See, I fuck up the Butter. release on this sometimes because I try to do it with this part of my hand because you can do this thing where the, because the action's so good on this knife, you can it, you can't even tell how it's opening. It's really kind of weird, but it's hard to do, and I fuck it up all the time. But if you just do the normal flip, I mean, I think snap. You have one of these. Oh, yeah. I mean, the action on. I mean, look, it's just yeah, it's whoop. super fidgety. Uh, it's the other so knife, fidgety because I've been carrying a knife for food prep because I've been cutting up a lot of chicken and stuff, and I don't want to clean off my knife every time. My my other knife. Look at this boomer here timers in the middle of the podcast that was that was my phone it wasn't a timer this What's is that? the other knife this is the come on Ridian rogue wave midlock nice. this one is just what? super sexy was that a uh was that a um sorry i mean it's a synonym this is, so. this is my bouge knife. is that the one that's like nine thousand dollars <laughs> it's a it's a seven hundred dollar custom yeah um uh, yeah that is a rather it's a sexy rather expensive piece. it's sexy but it's a rather expensive uh slip joint or it's not really a slip joint it's a backlock it's a backlock um with a thumb stud it's a nice looking knife though i'm not gonna lie yeah i like this thing dude i got myself good did you see the picture on instagram which one i don't think so you see that Ooh uh come on focus you know uh, you know the you know the ones that gross me out um is anytime you cut your finger and it goes through the nail bed oh dude there's something so, about that that like and and i don't get grossed out by gore i mean you could gut somebody whatever but there's something about a cut going through a nail bed that just kind of makes me like it gives me like the it's like the nails on the chalkboard situation. You know, I'm like, eh. I, I feel oh. like I should have this knife on me to show you because it, it's such a snappy knife. Let me go get it real quick. I'll be right back. Have you guys, have you guys seen a Malibu? Uh, it's going to have a hard time focusing because it's such a fucking flat black knife. Hands behind the knife. Focus, you bitch. It won't focus. Why won't it focus? There it is. Oh, such. So, you know, something that, that Protec does on a lot of their knives that I was talking to the people while you were gone. Something that Protec does that uh, not a lot of knife manufacturers do, but I really like it, is they very little branding, right? Like that TR3 operator has none. There is not yeah, any no branding. Problem. It's zero. Nothing on the entire knife. This, the only place you see Protec is along, along like the spine. The, yeah, along the spine. I mean, that's going to be hard to get that to focus. Wait. It's okay. Wait. You're going to like this too, Jeremy. What's that? This uh this beaver tail? Oh, yeah. If I can you get it to nice. focus. So look at that patina on the blade. I flitzed it. Oh, I saw, I saw I saw your post about that. Yeah, so that's this knife, day. this is a slip joint, right? It's got a big, strong spring along the back, but it also has a liner lock. Mm -hmm. So you have to push the liner out of the way, and then it snaps up to the half stop. See, I like 
that better because that's my main gripe about slip joints is they make me a little nervous that I'm going to cut a finger off. Right. But here's what happened. So normally I grip the lock right here and push over and your, your hands free. It's, it's a little sketch cause that snaps. But yeah. That's real sketch. That would fucking freak me out. I wouldn't like that at all. <laughs> <laughs> There's a half stop and my hand is behind the lock. It's not stopped from the blade, but the half stop stops the blade. Uh, and then just listen, just listen to this. Dude, it yeah. is. That's a finger just, guillotine. <laughs> it is a serious guillotine. But what happened was I had my thumb up here above the lock, and then I pushed it over, and the half said, stopped. Check out. <laughs> my nail stopped the blade. It was uh, like my finger wasn't uh, even there. It's just like. <laughs> <laughs> and I've super glued it back together like three times, and it just keeps coming back apart. It hurts like hell. We talked about these the other. Um, Leguio. Did, did, did I show you the one with the, the cutters on it? Dude, yeah. even this even this thing has a ridiculous. Dude, that thing has serious. I mean, walk they and have talk a, too. It, really good walk and talk. Yeah. Did, did we decide that that's how you pronounce that leg? leg, leg, uh, leg I made a video leg. yesterday and I was pronouncing it. So who knows? Sure. <laughs> you'll, yes. know the com- you'll know in the comments real soon. <laughs> no, Taylor. It's I watched blah, like blah, blah, four blah, videos blah. and one of them was from the company. And I, I'd, I'd read it and I would hear it and I would say it once. And then as I hit record and started back on the video, I'm like, I don't remember how to say that. So. I've heard a couple people say it. I feel like I'm saying it wrong, but I think it's probably just my mouth doesn't. You got a certain accent. Certain words don't come out the same, right? Yeah. yeah. I, I did put a disclaimer at the very beginning of the video. I'm like, uh, there are French words and other things in this video it's a classy video and i'm not a classy guy <laughs> don't expect much from me on this one <laughs> don't expect uh what's in the glass today jeremy right now water Last thing um, quick. but i'm gonna open up with a little bit of that right there it's the, barrel. It's the elijah craig toasted barrel man I, i'm so upset that this bottle is even this low because this shit's so hard to get right now, even though this is a normal release for them and it shouldn't be difficult to get, I never, America. I never see this stuff. Uh, so I, I'm kind of ginger with the drinking of it because it's it's one of my favorites right now. That's going to be my warm up a little bit. Right now. So I'm going to start with this because I've not had this in some time. The old Statesman from Old Forester. You know, I still have never tried that. As much as I love Old Forester and Brown Foreman in general, I still have not ever tried the Statesman. Or if I have, it's been so damn long, I do not remember. Well, I'm um, uh, going to go fairly light. So I'm going to have just this much of this. And then afterwards, I will uh, have you finish ever seen off any? with some 1920. Uh, what was I going to go to? I was going to go to... <clears throat> I think I was going to go with, oh, I was going to go with some of the bourbon junkies, uh, one of their bottles, the uh, swordfish oil, which is actually a Sagamore barrel pick they did because it's really, really good. I was going to go with that second. I was going to go bourbon tonight. The last, I feel like the last few episodes, I've done a lot of scotches. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to stick bourbon. Yeah. I figured I'd go bourbon. Stay with my roots. I've been drinking scotch lately. So I figured I'd switch it up and go bourbon tonight but that kind of brings us into what we're talking about tonight because i I am limiting what i'm drinking like that was a little bit of a heavier pour because um i could live in this fucking cup i could take it (laughs) i could could curl up and just take a nap this one just oh it smells so good this one does not smell good right now the thing about the elijah craig toasted barrel (laughs) yeah sometimes you get that yeah. The thing about the Elijah Craig Toasted Barrel is it's, like I said, it's part of their normal release, and it's not even an expensive bottle. Like, I think the Toasted Barrel, the retail one, it's like, I want to say 40 bucks, maybe? 50? No, I think it's 50. I think the normal stuff's like 30, and I think it's like almost double. I think it's 50 or 55. So, you know, about the price of most of your 1920, 1910, you know, your, your um, what the fuck are that series? What's that series called? I'm having Whiskey a Whiskey Row. Start. Is it called Whiskey Row? Yeah. Um. So it's not a crazy expensive bottle and it's not a limited release kind of thing, but fuck, it's hard to find. Like it's, it's just really tough to find. Some people say they have it in their areas. I've never seen it. So I learned something mm. that doesn't happen often. So this is a big deal. <laughs> this is a big deal. We all, <laughs> let's take a moment to appreciate that. 
So all of the ABC stores that I've been going to uh-huh. are in Cabarrus County. Uh-huh. And uh, except for the one in Albemarle, which I've told you about is like the good one. Uh, but there's one I went to that's in Rowan County. And in Rowan County, they get different selections. And I think there's probably fewer ABC stores, if I were to guess. Uh, you could just walk in and like grab stuff that you can't get in Cabarrus County. Oh, you need to go handle that, son. Yeah, I learned that like this week or last week. <laughs> You're like, I'm going. Dang. I'm yeah. going. So, um, but actually, it was the one that I went to. And last time I went, they had everything in the Whiskey Row series. They even had 1910. They had a, a row of 1910, like two rows of 1920. Well, you know, all the Whiskey Row series is crazy easy to find here. Like, I, you could go in any liquor store in a 10 mile radius or 20 mile radius of me and probably find. Most, if not all, of the Whiskey Row series. It's, 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 Brian Foreman does pretty good at distributing that. It usually, so that's why when you couldn't find a lot of it in your area, I'm like, dude, that shit's like a normal bottle here. You know what I mean? Like, that's not a, a find here. It's like in every liquor store. Um, but, oh, and real quick, I know you're not ever <laughs> doing this, but I am smoking. This is a Placencia Alma del. Fuego? Which one is this? This is an Alma. I forgot. It's one of the Almas. I can't remember which one it is. But I'm only smoking a nub. When this one's done, I'm going to go over to this jobber right here. Dude, my camera really does not want to focus. It never and does. Like, that what, and you're the one that told me to go to uh, Sony. <laughs> Don't blame me for your uh, inadequacies, okay? <laughs> this is a Tatuaje. Uh, or not Tatuaje. Is this a Tatuaje? Who makes this cigar? I think it's Tatuaje. No, it's not Tatua. Hey, this is um, it's a me, and I can't pronounce it either. Uh, me queerda, me me queerda. Yeah, yeah. Keep going. This is good. This is good stuff. <laughs> me, I'm trying <laughs> to remember who who. I, I want to say it's a Tatua, hey, but I think I'm wrong. I think this is actually a um. I have his. I can see him in my head, but I can't think of his name for the fucking son. Steve Saka. I think it's a Steve Saka cigar. Actually, let me see me. Me queerda. How would you pronounce Q U E R I D A? Queerda? Quierda. Quierda. Me quierda. Me quierda. Yes. That is what this says. Me quierda. This is. <laughs> people in the comments are probably like, you fucking moron with your pronunciations. I'm pretty sure this is a Steve Saka cigar. I don't know. But. Yeah, Steve uh, Saka. That's up, right. Update. So I do have a shop. That's the news that I didn't tell you guys last time. I got a shop. Oh, yeah, and yeah, the yeah, yeah. thought process behind it was maybe I could podcast out there sometimes and also smoke. That'd be great. Not going to happen. <laughs> Not going to happen. Uh, I had I had the internet company come out, and they're like, mm, you're going to have to pay to run this line. And I'm like, nah, I already have mm -hmm. two internet bills. I don't need a third. So mm -hmm. we, we're just going to have no internet at the shop. Fine mm -hmm. by me. <laughs> Uh, I see some people asking, and and this is on topic, so I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna answer the question. Kyle Gallo asks, "How much weight are you down?" I'm proud of this, so I'm gonna go ahead and answer. Thirteen pounds as of today, so three and a half weeks, thirteen pounds. I'm hoping to hit fifteen in in the first month, which would be good, and then I will probably plateau hardcore, uh, but hopefully not. Obviously, well, on the opposite side of that. I've been prepping for some smoker videos for because it's that time of year. People are gonna start barbecuing and smoking, so I'm doing some smoker reviews and some smoking videos. So I've been eating a shit ton of barbecue, and I'm up about five pounds. <laughs> we can, what you're saying is we can meet in the middle. Yeah, I mean, I I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I had a I cooked a fifteen a fifteen pound brisket the other day, and uh, what else did I have cooked on the smoker? Point is, I've been eating a lot of fucking food, and I I haven't even weighed because I'm afraid it's probably not good. Well, I have been, uh, except for this past weekend, pretty religious about eating really healthy and tracking what I'm eating and, and sticking to a pretty, not, I wouldn't say it's a diet, but just, you know, watching what I'm putting in my body and restricting portions and just trying to do it right. I'm not following anything in particular. Uh, a few people that have been doing it, I would say alongside me, but not with me, we're doing keto, mm -hmm. not really doing keto. I'm just you know, eating clean, no processed foods. It's a lot of salad, a lot of protein and mm. light carbs, but I'm still, I'm still eating 
plenty of carbs. I haven't really cut them out, but scaled it way back because I'm a bread lover, and that's my it's the way to my heart is good old well, bread. You know, that's what we were talking about before, and then we said, let's stop talking about it. We'll save it for the podcast. But, you know, I did keto for a while back several years ago. And like I told you, I felt great when I was on keto. If you do keto correctly, right? A lot of people think keto, and we've laughed about this. A lot of people think keto means I can eat all the bacon and burgers and cheese that I want, and it doesn't have carbs. I'm okay. And while technically they're correct, you will stay in ketosis if you're eating that stuff. You're not going to be very healthy eating that way. The kind of keto, the kind of keto we did was we ate, you know, a lot of meat and fat and stuff like that, but we ate a big salad every day because you wanted to get our veggies in because if you're eating that much meat and stuff, getting your vegetables and vitamins and stuff is important. You so got to get that, you got to get that fiber because you you your, <laughs> your carbs uh, it'll clog those pipes up, man. Oh, dude, you're eating nothing but meat and cheese. You won't shit for a month. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, and when you do, it'll, it'll, you'll have to have leather to bite down on to like get through it. It'd be like birthing a baby. Um, <laughs> so we ate a huge salad every day. Um, and I, when I was on keto, I felt great. I did. Uh, I felt really good. I felt clear. I thought my, my thinking was sharper. I wasn't hungry all the time. Something happens when you're on keto where your appetite kind of goes weird and like, you eat, but you're not like, oh, God, I'm fucking starving. Like, I could go five, six hours and not eat, not even think about it. Where normally, if I go six, seven hours without food, I'm, I'm like, oh, my God, somebody give me fucking something out of starving. Yeah, I've been were- I've been on the opposite end of that this week. Last week, I was good. I was eating like 1,600 calories a day last week in full. Like, I wasn't restricting myself. I right. was just full. Like, I'm, I'm trying to stay under 2,000 calories and eating the right kind of stuff, but I was eating 1600 calories last week and feeling great. Right. You're headed, not hungry. Like everything was like well oiled machine. And then this week I'm like 1950 calories and I am still very hungry. And <laughs> you know, like I'm eating the same stuff, doing the exact same thing, but my body is just hungry this week. It's just, just, I mean, it, it could be a lot of things. Maybe you're burning more calories. Are you doing more activity this week or no, I'm things- actually doing less this week. Last week I was in the shop most days this week I've been here just sitting Mm -hmm. and on the phone and shooting a few shots, like nothing strenuous at all. So I I don't know, you know, but on the backside of what I was saying about keto, even though I felt great when I was on that, I think the route you're going is the route that I kind of settled with as being the best long-term kind of situation. Right. Cause eating keto long-term, like it's, it's, it's kind of a pain in the ass. Like, you know what I mean? And I don't know long-term if it'd be super healthy for you because you, you're you eating a lot of fucking carbs or a lot of uh, cholesterol usually. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, while I loved it and I felt great, my family has a tendency for the cholesterol to run a little high. Like some people it's hereditary, right? Their cholesterol, cholesterol runs a little high and mine's like that. Mine's always normal, but it's on the high end of normal, right? So I don't know. I just, even though I loved it, I wish I could stay on it. I feel like because you kind of have to be specific about what you eat and the cholesterol thing, I I don't know if it could ever be a long-term solution for me. Yeah. See, Um, I started uh, a few weeks ago. The first thing I did in the morning, I woke up, I was like, all right, I'm having some eggs this morning. And I put like four eggs in and then I started tracking my food that morning. I'm like, holy cholesterol. Like, right. Wow. Like the app was telling me that I needed like 300 milligrams of cholesterol per day and two eggs blows that. And I'm like, and you know, there's this, and there's good cholesterol and bad cholesterol. And that's where it gets super confusing, right? Because everybody tells you like one year, you're not supposed to eat fucking eggs, right? You're allowed to eat egg whites. You shouldn't eat the yolks. The next year they say, oh, well, diet doesn't really dietary cholesterol doesn't really affect your cholesterol in your blood. And I'm like, well, horse shit, because when I eat a bunch of shit that has high cholesterol, my cholesterol goes up. So I don't, so, but then they say, well, it doesn't matter your actual number. It's your residual cholesterol. That's really the problem, right? So you could have higher than what they say is healthy. And if your residual cholesterol is okay, you're okay. So it gets very complicated. And I don't think anybody really knows what the fuck they're talking about. I think they're all guessing. (laughs) Right. Because they change their mind about cholesterol like constantly. It's like, yeah. And that's why I've not like, I posted a story about this on my Instagram and I knew before I posted it that I was asking for it, that I was just going to get like all the 
professional nutritionist nutritionist <laughs> you just pulled a jeremy <laughs> I did. professional nutritionist coming out of the woodworks being like you need to eat this and do this and do and like everybody had their own opinion i probably got 500 messages that day and i'm just like look i i appreciate you trying to pitch in and help out but i'm just kind of going my own path and trying to figure this out and and what works for me because i've done this before and i've had success doing it i know what i need to do and i can do it and it works and i'm i'm very clear headed i've had tons of energy and here is the biggest thing for me the biggest motivator more than anything why Back. even when yes yeah <laughs> i am even this week when i've been just so hungry i'm like no i'm not i'm not wavering from this because I have not had a single backache and I've had chronic back pain for two years and the right. last three weeks, three and a half weeks, no back aches. I wake up in the morning. I'm spry. Like I just, I feel good. Dude, being, being the, your body carrying more weight than it should has a toll on a lot of things. Well, I, I don't think it was just that. Like, yeah, I'm <laughs> overweight. I'm still overweight. I know that, but it was, it was inflammation. If you go back to the video where I was putting the suspension or the lift kit on the Land Rover, I had a really bad bout of trigger finger mm -hmm. and my finger just kept going in and I, it lasted for 10 minutes. I just wanted to keep going in and my hands were achy every single day. Just wake up and my hands hurt. And I thought I was getting arthritis or something. I'm like, shit, mm -hmm. I'm 30 years old. Like my hands hurt when I wake up and my hands feel fine. Like that's been going on for maybe three or four months. My well, hands you know, the funny fine. My the, back the feels funny. good. The funny thing about that, and that's a, uh, a reason why a lot of people tout keto as being great, right? Is supposedly it's a very um, anti inflammatory diet, right? Like it's supposed to, a lot of people say that the carbs and stuff cause a lot of systemic inflammation in your body, which can aggravate arthritis and pain, joint pain, and all these different things, even like irritable bowel and all these things. And they're saying that keto is very, or low carb, even if you don't eat keto. Yeah. Uh, eating lower carbs produces less inf inflammation systemically in your body. Here's the thing. It's all kind of the thing with dieting, right? And, Cause that's what we're talking about is, you know, being healthy and lifting weights and stuff. I, I loved your title, by the way, uh, picking, <laughs> putting things down and picking things up or how you started it. How to um, pick things up and put them down. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> here's the thing. Cause you know, I used to be a part owner of a gym and I trained people and did stuff. And here's the thing, as many fad diets as hit, whether it's keto or whether it's the carnivore paleo. diet, paleo, oh, fucking whatever. Atkins. 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 That was like the worst one ever. Um, hey, there are some Atkins bars that I really like, though, that I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying right now. But the main, the main thing is, one, you can never go wrong with eating whole food, shopping the perimeter of the store, staying out of the whole center, Shop the perimeter of the store. So eat whole fresh foods and eat moderate caloric intake, right? Like don't, for your, your weight and size, be reasonable. Don't eat 6,000 calories a day if you're sitting in a desk all day. And you know what I mean? Like, so eat whole foods, moderate caloric intake. You can never go wrong with that. But what it boils down to is everything's going to work differently for different people. Yeah. And that's why when people start giving you all this advice about, Keto is so great. Everybody should do keto or paleo is awesome. Everybody should do it because of this. It's like that might do that for you. And it might be catastrophically fucking horrible for somebody else. The, the other thing that I think is very important and where I've fallen off this whole thing several times in the past, because anybody who's watched the channel knows that this is not the first time I've tried to do this. This is the most successful I've been with it in the last six years, probably. Right. But it's because the other times I knew what I could do. And I knew that I could push myself and I knew that I could drop weight really quickly, but it wasn't sustainable. The, right. the biggest thing is to find something that's sustainable for you. And I think if I weren't feeling the, the effects of not having the inflammation in my back and I, if I didn't feel as good as I do right now, I would probably be, you know, trailing off a little bit already. But uh, man, having that motivator, but also, you know, doing something sustainable before I was doing like 1400 calories a day like going pretty hardcore and i i really don't know how i did it i wasn't eating high protein i was just i don't know what i was doing and i still don't really truly <laughs> what it comes down to i still don't really know what i'm doing i just know that what i am doing is is working and right. when i when i 
do something and it doesn't work, I stop doing that. Like um, days when I eat more steak and I've got higher calories and I'm still hungry, I'm like, uh, maybe I should have eaten chicken today or, right. or shrimp or fish. You know, it's like there are things that I can do. Like when I know I'm having a week like this where I'm very hungry, don't eat the steak. Go right. for fish or, or chicken, and and that's why I got sushi tonight. Like I, I needed some carbs. I needed yeah, some fucking, fish. I love steak. I, love, I love steak too. I had steak last night. I love it so much. I love it so much. And the I thing had, is, I had an eight ounce steak last night, and I was fucking starving after. <laughs> like, I was, really? See, yeah, what, man. I was. I was just I mean, so usually, hungry. Usually, steak is pretty sticky. Like, like when I say sticky, I mean like you eat it, it sticks with you for a little while. Like a lot of protein. You're, your your body, yeah, your body takes a little bit to break that shit down. So usually you're 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 pretty full for a little while. But you know, somebody, uh, I know we're not on comments yet, so I'm not going to read the individual comment. But somebody had mentioned in the comments that you know they how did they word it um, something about that they find that when they eat a lot of meat they feel like shit and they feel better when they eat lots of fruits and vegetables. Um, and that's just a, a perfect example of what I was saying about it. it's different for everybody. I've known people that when they eat lots of fruits and veg, all that fiber fucks their gut up and they just can't, they're gassy and they have issues and they have to kind of like, you know, moderate the amount of uh, fiber they eat and too much fruits and vegetables really messes them up. So that's why I said you just sustainability, which you were talking about is super yeah, too important. Much, too much of anything or too little of anything right. will mess you up. And that's why keto doesn't work for some people because it's too few carbs you need right. carbs. Carbs aren't inherently bad. It's just you got to do the right things with them. You got to eat the right carbs and eat the right amount of them. Which and, is which is why I've settled on what you're doing now as being my preferred thing that I suggest to most people in the way when I'm eating good, which I have not been doing lately. Um, when I'm eating good, I stick to that. Shop the perimeter store, eat whole foods, moderate caloric intake because – no matter what it boils down to, what works for you, what works for them, it's a calories in, calories out game, yeah. right? I mean, what yeah. it boils down to in the I'm end, right? Mostly sedentary right now, so I've got to be very strict with my calories, right? Like, and I mean, that can be that can be tweaked a little bit with keto. When you're in ketosis, you burn more fat and stuff, and the so the calorie in, calorie out thing it can be tweaked a little bit. But at the most base level, if you burn more calories than you eat you lose weight. If you eat more calories than you burn, you gain weight. I mean, yep. at the and simplest I was, I was level, that's what I it almost is. hit. I almost hit my highest weight ever. Uh -huh. I didn't hit it, but I got very close and it was close enough to be like, this is it. It's, it's time to, to make a change. <laughs> You're like, I've, I've hit, a, I have hit a milestone that I did not want to hit. <laughs> I have, I have hit a record that I didn't want to. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> highest I ever hit was 255. And three weeks ago know. on Saturday, three weeks ago on Saturday, it was 250. And I'm like, I, hell the biggest no. I ever was, was two, 230 was the heaviest I ever was. And I was on a whole lot of steroids when I was 230. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I don't think I could get that weight just eating. I don't think my body would carry it. I mean, I guess I could, but it would be Dude, tough I, for me. I stayed at 240 for years, years. And then well, COVID, then COVID well, hit, and I, I went hard on the the hazy IPAs, which well, now I know are like three and four hundred calories a piece, and they're like pure carbs and sugar. Like, oh yeah, oh absolutely. Yeah. I, well, and you know that's the other factor that we haven't talked about is everybody's metabolism is different, right? So like. There are certain people that are thin. I have buddies that can eat whatever they want all day long and never gain a pound. Like, yep. and that goes back to the whole kind of, it kind of the same things we were talking about is everything's different for everybody. And then I know other people that can eat like a fucking a rabbit, <laughs> uh, like a, a, a damn lettuce wrap with celery in it and gain 10 pounds. Like, you know what I mean? Like it, a lot of times though, man, honestly, those people that like gain weight super easy, Fad diets can fuck your metabolism up too. So you have to be careful with that shit too. Crazy restricting your calories too long, too severely can mess with your metabolism. I think yeah, it usually, shocks your system when you finally do eat. Right. I you know? think what they say is usually, and I'm sure somebody will correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, but I want to say like a five to 10% caloric deficit 
right, is is a healthy caloric deficit to be at to slowly and healthily lose weight and not wreck your fucking metabolism by, you know, you don't want to drop to eating like 800 calories a day because then your your metabolism is going to reset eventually. And then when you go back, because you cannot maintain on 800 calories a day, when you go back to eating 1,600 or 2,000, you're going to gain weight like rapidly. Yeah, your body's like, I need this. Give me more. <laughs> right. Right. So it's going to cling on to everything. And uh, that's what I think what was happening before is I was, I was starving myself to a degree, not like really starving myself, but I was depriving myself of nutrients I needed. And then, you know, three, four weeks in, I'm like, oh God, I'm so hungry. And I'd have one cheat day. And then I'm like, oh, that was great. That was really good. My body's like, give me more of that, please. Can I have a little more of that? <laughs> not to totally derail what you were saying, but have you ever looked at the rocks Instagram on his cheat days? No. Dear God, I have watched like a Shaw strength video when he's, he's, uh, bulking and training for a competition. Have you, dude? Yes, I have. I've watched dude, all that. He's, he's like he, he eating is. like every other 30 minutes. It's like, oh my God. Hey, and, and I mean, amounts of food that I couldn't eat if I tried, like he's just a big in a man. day, like he's just he a, eats more in a meal than I could force myself to eat in a day. He's also a huge, he's a huge human being. Like. <laughs> Like I'm five like ten. six seven or yeah, something I'm, like that. I'm five six, ten. Five. I'm five ten. And when I was two twenty five, two thirty five, and I was on the juice, if you would have seen a picture of me, you would have thought I was huge. At two thirty, you would have been like, that dude weighs two hundred sixty five pounds. But then you saw me in person, you'd be like, Oh, you're a fucking short fuck. You don't weigh that much. <laughs> you're just short, <laughs> so you look bigger. You know, you know what I mean? Um, but no, he is a huge human being, like four something. I think he weighs four something, doesn't he? Didn't we? But the rock on his cheat day, going back to that, he will eat a fucking stack of pancakes like this high, or he eats this French toast that I actually made, and it's fucking delicious. He he makes French toast like that thick. He makes Ryan. French toast so thick that you can't cook it in the skillet. You have to skillet cook it to brown it and then finish it in the oven because there's no way to cook it through without burning it. <laughs> it's that fucking thick. Oh my God, uh, Brian Shaw is six foot eight, four forty. Yeah, dude, that guy. And his average daily caloric intake is twelve thousand calories. Yeah, dude, that is just that's a different. But I mean, he trains like a freaking monster. I, I, no, I just have to look it up now because the. Mountain, but here's the thing: um, he's six foot eight. So even if he wasn't now, he trains like a madman, and that's why he's four hundred forty pounds or whatever. But even if he didn't train like that, he's still six foot eight. That's a huge fucking guy. That is a yeah. huge. Even if he didn't work out a lick at six foot eight, he would probably be walking around at what two seventy to three hundred, just normal walk around weight. I mean, like how how much does Shaquille O'Neal weigh? I don't know. I'm like, looking up half Thor Bjornsson because he's also that, yeah he's a fucking monster too. He's was the strongest. He's, yeah, he's six nine three forty four. It says. Yeah, he's a little thinner than than Shaw. He's taller, yeah. I think, but thinner. One inch taller. Well, it's funny that I say thinner. When, I mean, <laughs> he's ain't nothing thin about that. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> he, he yeah. is literally the mountain. I mean, I know that was his character in Game of Thrones, but he is dude. So he, big. he crushed uh, the Mandalorian skull, bro. He crushed Mando's skull. Uh, he, he crushed the Mando skull before Mando is Mando. How much? 324, but he's also seven foot one. So he's yeah, but five that's, inches so that's, taller. So that's what I'm talking about, right? Like he's not like a strong man. I mean, I'm sure he works out because you know he's been an athlete his entire life, but he doesn't like do strong man. And he's rolling around at 340. I mean, when you're that tall, you, you have to be pretty fucking heavy. Yeah, <laughs> you got a lot of meat. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's it's it is what it is. Um, those guys are crazy though, man. Those guys are crazy. <laughs> some of the, some of the shit they do is yeah I'm, I'm still mad that i i didn't even think about the fact that i can't even do it because i don't get your audio so, so i can't i can't you even have to listen to the podcast and then download that i'm not going through all that to get a fucking sound bite <laughs> <laughs> i'm just i'm just not i tell you another um it just made me think of it because somebody said something about Olympians in the comment. Another guy that had a crazy diet, ate a lot of calories Phelps. was Phelps. Yeah, dude, yeah. That motherfucker. He used to eat crazy amounts of calories. Crazy. Um, so the other side of what we were talking about, though, with like, you know, is really what you titled it is like, you know, working out and stuff. I am probably in the worst shape of my life. Um, well, same. 
but I've been I, here for a while. Well, thank you for joining me. <laughs> right. <laughs> Misery loves company, bitch. Come join. Um, I, my entire life since I was, I played sports growing up and then played football and lacrosse growing up. So that kept me in pretty decent shape and then started training early in life because of football and stuff. So, I mean, I started lifting when I was probably 14. Um, and I've trained, I was part owner of a gym my entire life. And over the last few years, man, I have fallen off the wagon, man. My routine is sporadic at best. I mean, it's, it's bad. It is bad. I've got to get back into the rhythm of things. I feel I, better when I, when I train, I have to get into it. Period. Like, <laughs> period. Yeah. He's, he's like, <laughs> he's like, I've, I've never trained. I mean, I used to have like, I played soccer in high school and we would have some pretty intense practices. Um, our soccer team may not have been the best. We definitely were not the best, but we were for sure in the best shape of any of the other soccer teams around. Well, uh, dude, soccer maybe, guys are in good shape. They run all the time. Like all you're doing is running. Bro, let me tell you, our soccer practices, when we would get there, when I played uh, for the school, or, well, no, I guess this was rec league. It was rec league. So it wasn't even for school. It was just, we were there by choice. Um, show up. We do a two mile for time. And if we didn't hit a certain metric for that, we had to run two more miles. Ooh. Right. So that you, you, you hit that mark. And if you didn't, you're running four miles. And then we would go from that to running uh, sprints, the length of the soccer field. Yep. Uh, we so we used to do that shit in football. We used to do, uh, they used to call them gassers. So you'd run from the end zone to the five yard line, back to the end zone to the 10 yard line, back to the end zone to the 20, back to the end zone 30. You're getting where I'm going, right? all the way to the hundred and then you know dude no we just we just went the length of the field and back and there and back and there and back as fast as we could i think we'd do like 10 of them ah so and then we would scrimmage for like 45 minutes we would do upper body workouts and then at the very end of everything we do a five mile cool down run cool cool down run but we had to keep the coach's pace (laughs) Ah, oh, no. See, luckily, right. none of the oh. sports I did, they didn't do a lot of long distance running like that, right? Because, I mean, lacrosse, they did a fair amount, but like not as much. Football, we never did any crazy long distance stuff because in football, you train more sprinting, right? Because you don't do a lot of super long runs in football. You you have a play, right? right? Most you're going to run is 100 yards and touchdown, bitch. You win. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. Then, yeah, yeah. Then, you, then you get to a breather while they move the chains and do everything else and switch sides. So um, lacrosse, you, we ran a little bit more, but I've never, I've never been in real great, like long distance running shape. Oh, no. well, I mean, I was then, but I always hated it. I had no endurance. Like when we played right. soccer, it was so bizarre. And I know nobody's going to believe me, but I was the biggest guy on the team and I was the fastest guy on the team. Uh-huh. I had no endurance, but I could just <laughs> sprint like hell. He, he's hell out in the gate, but not much for endurance. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so I was always, you know, having to run four miles because I couldn't do those two miles at the right time. And uh, I had to run extra because of that. And I mean, it, it worked. Eventually I was in good shape and everything, but I quit soccer and my, metas- my metabolism at 18 years old is like, <laughs> fuck this guy, I'm out. <laughs> you know, and and I've, I've struggled ever since, but I never, I, I've been into a gym once in my life I went in oh, with a friend of mine i was a gym rat he <laughs> blew my arms out i woke up the next morning I, I couldn't get my shirt off and i'm like you had t-rex arms oh no rat. i remember sitting in my office that day like i i did finally finagle my way into a shirt and i drove the car and i got to the office and i remember in the middle of the day my nose itched and i'm like huh? <laughs> <laughs> How do I get there? I couldn't, I couldn't do it. I did that a couple of weeks ago. I went out there in the garage and worked out a little harder than I should have. Cause I hadn't worked out in a while and did some curls that I shouldn't do it. And I had the same thing. I was probably not to the degree you were, but I found myself going to take a drink and I was like, like bringing my head down to the cup because <laughs> you know, use your other arm. To lift. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're like, <laughs> you gotta put your arm on the table and use the chair to, you know? <laughs> it's like man and it, it, being super sore is miserable it's miserable it's it's yeah. it's really uncomfortable and i think that's what ruins a lot of people on lifting and stuff is because they like you said you got real sore like that and you're like fuck it i'm out like i'm not doing that again 
the thing is though is you probably overdid it uh, honestly so if you would have taken it a little easier and you would have kept going that goes away i, I yeah. you know norm i got to a point where i couldn't get sore like no yeah. matter well, what i did i couldn't get sore anymore well, you're gonna be proud of me i have a date in my calendar start of next month <laughs> this month's just totally bummed like I, there's no way i can do anything else this month but um may 4th going in the gym 7 30 in the morning with a personal trainer in the basement here <laughs> if it were anywhere any further from here i'd be like nah there's no way um that would so be yeah. good man that that is the best way to lose weight is get in the gym lift some weights because you you're actually your metabolism raises longer after weight training than it does from cardiovascular training unless you're doing um hit training any of that high intensity stuff you you get a pretty good bump in metabolism for a while but um you 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 lose weight and then you can eat a little more because you're working out so you're burning more calories so you can you can free up your diet a little bit you know what i mean like you can eat a little you don't have to feel like oh i gotta stay at like 1400 calories a day because you're working out and you're busting ass you could bump up yeah. to i mean it depends on the person but you could bump your calories up five, 600 calories a day and eat a lot more um, because you're working out, which feels good, you know? Plus you yeah. just feel better when you're working out. Well, yeah, I, I, I know for a fact that I'm going to plateau very soon. I, I know that from history, yeah, everybody does. I've done this several times, get the weight off, I plateau, and then I fall off. Uh, and that's something I adamantly do not want to do this time. And I think the biggest motivator other than my back uh, feeling good and my hands not hurting is having kids. I don't, I don't want to be that dad who's just, just always tired and sitting back like, around. Like, you go play. I'm too tired. Like, I just don't want to be that at all. No. And, uh, I, I said I that when Eleanor was kids, born, I will whip all my kids ass. All of them. <laughs> well, I didn't want to be that ass. when Eleanor was born, but it was easy to just kind of be like, Oh, she's too young to really do much right now. Anyway, whatever. Uh, now she is very active very active and I, I can actually keep up with her now like uh -huh. i could before but i was just sluggish i didn't have any energy and now dude i've got so much energy compared to what i had just three weeks ago dude, wait till you start working out when you start working yeah. out you usually you see like an energy dip at first right because your body's not used to that training and you're like oh fuck but you get after your body kind of gets used to it man, you feel so much better all the time because your body's, your body's meant to move, man. You know what I mean? We're not meant to sit in a chair all day in, in front of a computer screen. Well, so when you're I'm, moving your body and eating right, man, you get to feeling fucking great. So, sorry for everybody. Anybody wondering why I keep touching my eye. Um, it's pollen season. In North Carolina Bro, and why do you think you've seen me in these glasses the last two episodes? Because dude. my contacts... Remember I was telling you the dry, I, I, everybody's like, why are you fucking with your eyes every episode? Because my contacts are dry out. So I'm just like, fuck it. I'm not wearing my contacts till this pollen calms down. It's, it's not that. It's just like, for some reason, the corner of my eye just started itching like 20 minutes mm -hmm. ago. And it's, I touched it once and now I'm done. <laughs> that's the end of it. It's just gonna, that's it. Um, hey, I can't remember what side, I was saying before. Side note, did we ever figure out a way to do a giveaway? No. We need to do that because. Is that I a new was, shirt? By the way, yes, it is. Nice. I got an idea for a shirt today, and uh, patina, I don't patina, want to talk about patina, it. Bitches. I've uh, actually got which one is it? Patina, 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 patina. 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 People have been asking for a patina, patina, patina shirt for a while, so I finally got the patina, patina shirt. They're up on the website, and I've got I think I got two or three new designs up on the website and a hoodie, even though it's kind of coming out of hoodie weather. But then I realized like there's lots of areas of the world where you could wear hoodies almost all year. <laughs> so I was like, I went ahead and put them out there for people that live in colder areas. And uh, yeah, there's two or three. There's actually a couple of really cool t-shirt designs that I really like. Um, I'll tell you about mine. I put the stealth alive. version of the, this is the way shirt back out because may the fourth be with you is coming up. So <laughs> national star Wars day, bitch. Come on, dude. Come on. I thought it was Pokemon. <laughs> Uh, somebody said they thought it was Pantera the whole time. Yeah, it does kind of look like a Pantera. Um, so anyway, go. What were you saying about your shirt with the thing? You were going to say something. Oh, I was just saying I'm not going to talk about the shirt that I'm making until I have it designed. And then, oh, yeah, yeah. But I thought about it today and it's perfect. It's perfect. I'm, I'm excited. I'll tell you once we're off air. 
Nice. Nice. I'm pretty happy with the last couple these couple designs that I put out this time. I like them. There's one that I have that's also a patina ish shirt that I have not dropped yet because it's got a Statue of Liberty thing. I'm going to drop it closer to the Fourth of July since it has a Statue of Liberty on it. And um, then I've got. Uh, do I get a commission for those? Like a little cut of those? Because I feel like I should. Right for the, the 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 what did you call it? The man card Liberty. Oh, but that's why I got started on this. And you asked me about the shirt. Is um, I've got those. We're going to be dropping the man card version too, probably, I don't know, sometime in the next month, probably. And I had a few of those man card version ones, the special ones that I had forced patina that we were, I, I'm going to sell most of them. I'm going to drop them to my Patreons. And then if my Patreons don't buy them all up, then I'll drop the few left out to the public. But I wanted to do a giveaway on one on here. But last time we did a giveaway, it was such a fucking nightmare. We've got to figure out a way. We've got to figure out a way to do the giveaway so I can, because I was going to give one of them away on here. Like I said, I'm going to give one away on here. Then they're going on sale to my Patreons because I have to give them first grabs at it. And then if there's any left, I'll put them for sale, but there's not but a few of them. So I doubt, I'm, I'm assuming the do, Patreons will probably grab What we them. should do is, uh, no, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> That's just going to start an, ignore me. I'm not <laughs> going to say anything. I was going to like basically cause some chaos for you, but uh, I'll save you chaos because yeah, it could have actually gone sideways so i'm not even going to mention it uh, okay yeah i don't we got to figure out a way to do it because i've been saying i wanted to do a giveaway on that and i do um want to do that um and when chad's on here i don't know if he's on here tonight i haven't seen him yet but normally he's on here and you know it's easy to ship out he's got all the boxes originally i was just going to do the cards because they were extra cards we had and i forced patina them. we didn't have any boxes for him and i was just going to do it without the box but then chad's like no we can do it proper and like i'll order some more boxes for him so i mean they're proper like the original man cards are just forced patina by me and they're the only ones of the version ones left because those sold out a long time ago we're about to go to version two which if, oh if dude, you, version two come on God jeremy damn. if you make a man shit shirt this person's asking about a man shit I, shirt. I, well i have one that says do man shit if you have a man shit shirt mm -hmm. i should make a man shit shirt but it's going to be a man shitting but well that, that was the thing right if you just put man shit on a shirt there's a risk of it being like what was that movie with Jim Carrey where he was in his neighbor's yard with a newspaper just taking a shit because the what movie was that? Oh, the dog no. the dog kept shitting in his yard, so he went over and shit in his neighbor's yard. <laughs> I don't know. Was that Bruce Almighty? Maybe. I think it I don't know. It, it was one of those. Um I have a shirt that says do man shit. Um I, I don't have just man shit. I do have one that says do man shit. Just go to my website, jeremysires.com. There's uh You know what? I'm gonna make a, a spoof of your shirt and just say man do shit. <laughs> man do shit that sounds like you're saying mando shit which is star wars which is not not your thing you're anti -Star it is wars. not my thing at all. you're anti-star wars because you don't have a soul okay so the, the verdict's still out because one person says liar liar and the other person says me myself and irene uh me myself and irene oh, makes more it, sense it, i think it was, was me myself and irene a dissociative personality disorder or something like yeah. that yeah me, yeah me that's what it was it was me myself and irene that's what it was um yeah that was that was a funny ass movie I think that was also the one where he had a boner and was peeing and he couldn't stop it. So he's like directing the pee. Like he pulls like a fucking pitcher off the so wall long. and he's trying to deflect the urine that's going straight up back into the toilet. <laughs> it's been <laughs> it's so a, long since I've seen yeah, that movie. It's, that was some funny. Those are some funny movies back in the day. Bro, um, not to get way into the weeds. I mean, we talked about the shit we were supposed to talk about for quite a while for us. So if we go that, off at this that point, is like, that is very true. <laughs> Mortal Kombat. I dude, I saw that's coming out on like Disney Plus or something. They're gonna like it's gonna, you know, because they're doing all the movies on Disney Plus now. Friday. Dude, does it look good? It looks okay. So you know how the first one was, right? Did you it watch sucked. the first? It was it was very it was, meme -y, right? Like yeah, I watch it for the memes. It right, right, right. It's funny more than anything, but the new one looks like legit. Like oh, it's HBO Max. I'm sorry, that's right. It's not Disney Plus, it's HBO Max. It's like, uh, I'm trying to think of a good comparison. It's dark looking. It's very, almost like Dark Knight. Like, very serious. Dude, ah. it looks it looks good. They, they released just, the first hard. seven minutes of it. It's hard to be serious when you've got a guy with like four arms and like <laughs> a, guy that, a guy that freezes people. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, nah, dude, it, you need to watch the first seven minutes. It looks really good. Dude, I just remember loving that game as a kid because it was like the most graphic fucking game. I remember when it first came out. Oh, the, like you, the movie? 
you ripped the dude's score. spine out and shit. It was like, oh yeah. I mean, we were all fucking stoked about it. Um, I hope there's a fatality, like fatality. <laughs> there has to be. Get over. Has here. To be. Uh, well, okay. Head. So this is the the origin of that. This movie the, is the origin of get over here. Oh really? Uh, well, really? the first seven minutes is is uh, Sub Zero and Scorpion, basically. Ah, uh, okay. Before they become Sub Zero and Scorpion, I, I, I guess you. I'm not like super into the lore and everything, but. That's what I gathered from the the first seven minutes. It looks so, really good. So you're anti Marvel altogether, right? Am I remembering that correctly? That you're anti Marvel? No, 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 no. See, I used to love them. Uh huh. They they just went a little on the they they beat a dead horse basically. They just Did, have you watched? I love the, Deadpool. Both Deadpools Dead, are Dead, amazing. Dead, Love fucking hold ryan reynolds was born to be that character yes um well the reason i say that is you know they're this friday is the season or series because i think they're only doing one season of it of uh the falcon and the winter soldier and i wonder if you would like it because it's pretty it's hard to say realistic with any marvel thing but i feel like it's not crazy over the top it has a lot of backstory and it talks about the new captain america and gives you some backstory on the winter soldier and his whole thing it's i think it's a really well done series and i just i wonder if you would like it i wonder i'll, I'll it, give it a chance i haven't had time to watch anything lately but the thing for me in the marvel comic universe was basically I, this martin scorsese really kind of came out against it and uh -huh. Basically, he was like, these aren't movies. They're not telling a story in the traditional way that m movies tell stories. They're predictable. And you, you pretty much know exactly what's going to happen as soon as you start it. They're good I, as in, in terms of technicality, but the writing is just kind of like copy and paste. Well, it's not, that's, though, that's, because the, the, I think that's an unfair thing that Martin Scorsese said, because I think... It's not Kevin Feige. What's the guy's name that that runs Marvel? Kevin Feige's the guy for um Star Wars. What's what's the guy? Fuck. What's the guy's name? The main guy with Marvel. He wears a baseball cap almost all the time. He's kind of the head honcho over all the Marvel cinematic universe. Oh god, the fuck's his name? I'm drawing a blank. Anyway, it's not important. I think the way they interwove all those storylines and made them all interconnect in and of itself is a pretty outstanding feat to intermingle that many different movies with that many different subplots and stories and all interwave them together into one thing that culminated in Endgame. Like, it's pretty impressive. So to say that there's no storytelling, I think that's kind of ignorant of Martin it's Scorsese. Not, to say no, that. it's not that there's not storytelling. It's just not, like, compelling to me. It's just not. It, yeah. It's just like, okay. This it is happens. Kevin Feige. Okay, people are saying it is Kevin Feige. Then what's the fucking guy with Star Wars then? I get these guys fucked up all the time. I get them messed up. It is Kevin Feige is this Marvel guy. The Star Wars guy, John Favreau, and the other guy, the guy that did, he started out as an animator. Uh, I can't, man, my brain, I'm having brain farts. It's the other guy that's the big guy with Star Wars. He started out as an animator for like Clone Wars and stuff like that, and now he's like, big time in charge of a lot of the star Wars stuff. Anyway, it's not important. Kevin Feige. For me, I just got burned out on it because it was like every month I was going to the theaters to watch another one. And I'm like, okay, like, all right. Like, well, the reason I say that is I, I don't know if you, if you've never watched any of the other stuff, I wonder how you would feel about the Falcon. I, and the Winter I Soldier. watched up to winter soldier. Like, like the first time he was in a movie. That's what I remember. Dave Filoni, that's the guy. Bam, Dave Filoni. Yeah. That's the other guy. He's a Star Wars guy. Sorry. I think I think Martin Scorsese called him like a spectacle, and like technically, on, on like the technical side of things, they are very impressive, but not, sure. not like compelling in terms of storytelling, and they don't I, make you feel emotions like a like a movie typically does. It's more of I, like I have to disagree with that, man. I know people that cried at the end of Endgame when Iron Man sacrificed himself for everybody. Like, I'm not saying I did. I'm just saying I I feel like there is a story there and I feel like there is an emotional response in a lot of those movies. And I feel like, 
I don't know. I just feel like Martin Scorsese is being a little bit of an uppity bitch. And that's not to talk shit about Martin Scorsese. He's a I feel like he kind of has the right to. <laughs> right. If anybody has the right to be an uppity bitch, it's Martin Scorsese, certainly. I mean, he's a genius. But I just feel like that's kind of like he's he's kind of being like, oh, I'm Martin Scorsese and talking shit. Like, I I, I think that's an unfair statement to say there's no storyline and it doesn't. Um, no, uh, that's not what does. he's. That's not exactly what he said. I don't know what the quote was. I can try right, and look right, it up. Right. My point is, I think there's a lot of good story in some of those Marvel things. I think um, there is some emotional development, and I think you do get invested in the characters and in the storyline. He said it wasn't cinema. That's what he said. He said they're not real <sighs> cinema. I don't know. What is real cinema, right? Like, I think that's kind of, I don't know, man. I, I, don't, I don't know if you could say that's not real cinema. Like, I think... I don't know. I just, I don't think that's a fair thing to say that it's not cinema just because it's not good fellas. Right? Like, look, I'm not demeaning Scorsese stuff is amazing. Right? I'm not saying that his isn't the dude's a genius and pretty much everything he's ever made. I love, but for to say that his stuff is cinema and the Martin, the Marvel stuff isn't, I don't know, man. I just feel like that's kind of. All right. I'll pull up the quote. I'll pull up the, the exact quote. I have it right here. Oh, he said, just asked. okay, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, Martin Scorsese, one of cinema's most venerated current directors has, uh, is that a word venerated? I guess it is. Venerated, yeah. Superhero yeah. movies, uh, the dominant force in today's industry. Well, he said, I tried, you know, the director said when asked if he had seen Marvel's movies, but that's not cinema. He continued, honestly, the closest I can think of them as well-made as they are with actors doing the best they can under the circumstances is theme parks. It isn't the cinema of human beings trying to convey emotional, psychological experiences to other another human being. I just don't uh, agree with that. He said maybe it's easy to dismiss uh, VFX or flying people or spaceships or billion-dollar grosses. I think it's easy to say that you already have been awarded in a certain way. Alfred, H Alfred Hitchcock never won Best Director, so it's very nice, but it doesn't mean everything. I would much rather be in a room full of engaged fans. I just don't agree with that, man. I, I I just don't agree. I mean, who am I, right? Like, but you also like but, Star Wars. So. But I mean, there are people to say that it's not emotionally invested or however he worded it. Like, I just don't agree with that. I feel like there is some for emotional. Me, for me, it's low hanging fruit. They know that people are going to come regardless because they put a certain superhero in a movie, period. That well, that's, It's low hanging fruit. And for me, it's like, uh, it doesn't feel as uh genuine it's just, it's just like oh we yeah, have but, to make another one of these movies because they grossed really good last time like well but the people want them right so that's like saying if if spider co or benchmade puts out a knife that people are asking for and they go ahead and do it then it's like oh well if they're just putting it out because people want it so it's low-hanging fruit well i mean you want to put out stuff that people want, right? I mean, people want to see these these comic book characters that they followed for years and years brought to life in another media other than a comic I'm, book. They want to see right. it live. I'm not action. saying they shouldn't be made. That's right. not at all what I'm saying. I'm just saying they're just kind of, they're like comics in the fact that there are thousands and thousands of comics and they all tell very, very, very similar stories every time. Well, you know, I mean, like there's yeah, it's, you, you, it's plug and play. It's formulaic. And for me, I just kind of lost interest. I know that I'm in the minority. I know that I have the unpopular opinion. It's just not for me anymore. I, I watched a bunch of them. Well, I think years, you and Martin and now, Scorsese, I think you and Martin Scorsese are uppity bitches. <laughs> no, but, no, but to that kidding. same effect, like I've tried to watch several movies lately and I'm just like, eh. Yeah. I mean, so like I want to watch the Joker. I do. Uh, I, I, but I said, the Joker down, I'm was like, good. the Joker was good. I enjoyed the Joker. It was, that was for sure a different one. Like that was one that's like, man, if Martin Scorsese has a problem with that one, like, I don't know what to tell you, bro. Cause that movie was dark and weird. And, and see that's, like, that's the stuff I can get behind stuff. That's, that's kind of, it stands on its own. Like Deadpool. I didn't even really want a sequel to Deadpool. Right. Like it, it made sense. They set it up when they made the movie to be a sequel. Yeah, too, but it's so good. It was it's very so good. good. Very, very good. I, I, I really like it. I can't wait to see the next one. They're they're fucking great. I, everyone that comes out, I eat them up. They're great. But yeah, for me, I, I just feel like they're more spectacles and something to do for two or three hours. And if you're into the stories, 
that's good for you. For me, I just can't get into them anymore. It's the same I thing with it. Star I mean, Wars. And I, I saw I, Poker, uh, Chris, he asked if I like Harry Potter. I do, but I've seen them. So I don't want to watch them over and over and over. Uh, Alex can watch them on repeat, but I'm the kind of person I, wa- I watch something once. I don't want to see it again for like years. Yeah. Um, I don't know, man. I, I I mean, look, I'm not saying everybody should like all the Marvel movies because uh, everybody's got different taste right there's movies that i don't like and other people think are fantastic um i definitely give you a hard time as kind of a joke but i get it if you don't like them you don't like them but i think for them to say it's not cinema is kind of fucking rude in a way it's like man that's that's i don't think that's a fair i don't think it's fair you could say you don't like it and you don't find it engaging which is what you're saying and that i can respect that but for him to be like it's not cinema it's it's like it's like us as YouTubers. I get where he's coming from. I don't necessarily fully agree with him, but I'm I'm closer to being in agreement with him than I am the other side. But it's kind of like us as YouTubers who put like a week plus into every single video that we make comparing what we do to YouTubers who churn out multiple videos a day. It's like us calling them not YouTubers or something. Like I, right? I just I feel like that's kind of rude, right? And that's kind of the same thing. Yeah. It's like look, we're all doing our own thing, and it is what it is. Like it's different; it's a different form of it. But you got to have respect for the game, regardless. And just to be like, that's not cinema. I feel like I don't know. I feel like it's kind of a dick comment. I don't know. It is what it is. I mean, you know, Martin Scorsese. He's if anybody's got the chops to say something like that, it's him. It doesn't make it right, but I mean, yeah. But I mean, if you want to talk about a formulaic, I mean. A lot of his movies are a bit formulaic. I mean, if there's a mob movie, he's going to make it. Like all his, <laughs> all his movies are about mob guys. So I mean, it's like, don't get me wrong, I love them. I'm not talking shit, but I mean, they're all kind of about the same fucking thing: the mob. Yeah. This yeah. guy's run shit. He people try to overtake him. They fucking cut each other up. They kill each other's families. They act like assholes. Like it's, you know, it's kind of all the different versions of the same story. And then he's going to fucking talk shit. It's like, come on, man, don't do that. Yeah, but. Jeremy, you know better than I think anybody at this point that I, I just tend to not like things that other people like. <laughs> right? That's because you're a hipster, bro. Hipsters no, can't. I'm not even hipsters, a hipster. Hipsters can't like things that other people like. And that I'm, thing, I'm just a pure cynic, you know. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, I, I don't. I don't even like Harley's, dude. You about like bro, broke up with like, me over that? We can't talk about that. <laughs> like, I'm gonna get emotional. I'm gonna get fucking emotional <laughs> on that one. <laughs> Oh man! I, I, I mean, when you said I, that, I, dude, I literally was like, I like. I Jeremy like, threw at, his phone. I was looking at my phone, like, did this motherfucker just say what I think he just said? I'm like, I don't even remember what my response was, but I think I told you, I'm like, Taylor, we need to stop talking about this immediately. <laughs> <laughs> I told I told Jeremy that I'd rather have a Honda than a than a Harley. No, That's your true. first your first statement was you said I don't. I was talking about I I said I, something about my Sportster I used to have, and you went ugh, and I went what and you're like ugh, i hate harleys and i'm like what the fuck did you just say to me you hate harleys do you hate america and puppies you fucking communist like how can you hate a harley that's the most ridiculous thing i've ever heard of in my life it's not for me man god dude i can't i can't with you bro i can't i'd rather have a moped oh my god stop it it. (laughs) no 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 here's the thing i'm not downing Hondas. My uncle actually just re he's a Harley guy and he just rebuilt a vintage Honda from like the seventies or sixties or some shit. It's a cool looking little bike. It actually looks a lot like an old triumph, right? I'm not denying that there's, there's nothing wrong with some of the Hondas, but to say that you'd rather have a Honda over a fucking Harley do nothing. The sound of a Harley almost gives me a little bit of wood. Like the sound of a Harley is so good. You put yeah, but that's some, where it ends, right? I put some Vance and Hines on uh, pipes on my Harley, and that damn thing sounded so good, dude. I loved that. I could just, just listen to that bike all day. I loved the way that bike sounded. Um, I just uh, like cruisers and hardtails and all that. Like they just never. I never liked any of them, really. <laughs> Loom shot I don't even said, like sport bike. Loomshot just said, unconsciously stop peeing midway after hearing Taylor's Harley comment. <laughs> <laughs> I just dude, don't care for them, man. I just... Dude, they're, they're, they're like the most iconic American motorcycle. Like, they, they just ooze awesome. Like, I don't know how you can't like them. I don't like them. I don't care for them. 
Oh I don't like God, dude. I don't like that entire like genre of motorcycles. And Harley <sighs> exists within that genre. Oh, so dude, Harley it, it, by the transitive it, property. I don't like Harley. Harley ep ep epitomizes that genre, right? Like most all bikes that are that are stemmed from Harleys, right? Even Hondas and stuff that look like that now. Harley was doing it first. Honda used to have bikes that didn't look like Harleys, and then Harleys came, and now Honda makes stuff that kind of looks like a cruiser Harley stuff type thing. Um, now, I'm going to say this, and people are going to oh, definitely geez, consider yeah. me a, a hipster, but I, I like cafe racers. <laughs> well, I mean, I got to the wrong cafe racer. Some of the people uh, kind of make some Harleys kind of in that style. I My um, Sportster had some cafe racer-esque I had like the low bars. I had the raised tank and stuff. Mine was more like a bobber, really. But my bars looked kind of like a cafe racer, but it was like more like a bobber. Um, but um, I don't know, man. I just loved that bike. It hurt me to get rid of it. It, it, it hurt my soul to get rid of that bike. But, you know, I still I, I asked anything, Alex right? if I could get my motorcycle license, and she said emphatically no. Um, I, I Well, okay, to be fair, two of my worst injuries ever were on a street bike, so... There, that's why. Can I reach it? And to be fair, that's why I got rid of my bike. Um, because you know, I don't know if you, I think you knew, I don't know if everybody knows, but we had a my father in law passed away in, in a motorcycle accident. And um, after that happened, um, it was really hard on my wife every time I'd go out on the bike, she really worried and would kind of get anxious and freaked out, obviously, for, for rightful reasons. Uh, and I just felt horrible. I couldn't do it to her. So I got rid of it because I couldn't put her through that every time I left on the bike, her having like anxiety attacks over it. So yeah, I got rid I, of it. I, my first wreck was before I knew Alex. It was uh, two days after I got my street bike. It was just a little 250, nothing special. And uh, I flipped it doing 70. That threw, me about a, <laughs> threw me about 100 feet. Yep, I'll broke, do it. Broke Yep, broke my tailbone, broke my arm in two places. That'll do it. That'll do it. That's um yep. motorcycles are scary, man. I, I always rode my motorcycle like everybody was trying to kill me because uh, you basically have to be that way. Um because yeah, you have to be very like, I'm here. All right. <laughs> like well, notice me. Yeah. Which is by the way, one of the things I like about Harley's, it's kind of hard not to hear those son of a bitches. My bike, you could hear from two streets over. That thing was so yeah. loud. It was so loud. Um uh well. I fixed it up, rode it for a little while, and when my permit expired, I just kind of quit. And then eventually I went and took a test, got my permit renewed, never got my license, actually. So I have a bike at home just sitting in a shed rotting away. So I'll probably take it over to the shop at some point, fix it up, and sell yeah, it. Working on it. Yeah. It's, I mean, bikes are fun, man. I used to love riding. It, it was a lot well, of fun. That's, I enjoyed it. that's what started that conversation, right? Uh, I was talking to you, and this kind of ties back into what we were talking about. I really want an e-bike. Oh yeah, like yeah, really, yeah, that's really bad. Uh, I can get kind of that cafe racer look. I can get some exercise, and I can commute to work very easily. My office is three miles from my house. The coffee shop is a mile from here. My my shop is three miles from this office. Like it's all within like a I think a 10, 15 mile loop. Um, and and I don't plan to always use it as an e-bike. The plan is to ride it, but when I'm coming in to shoot videos and work and stuff, if I ride a bike here, I'm going to get just drenched in sweat. So right. the idea would be like, ride the bike here as an e-bike and then pedal home, hopefully. But uh, those things are also like, I don't know, 60 pounds. Mm -hmm. So it'd be a serious workout if I tried to ride at home. So I, I don't know. I want to try it out. You know, I want to see how it is and it makes sense in some capacity, but yeah, it's not, it's not like, doing it solely for exercise but i think pedaling getting even just a little exercise is better than what i do now so and i have that option too is if i'm headed home pedal get sweaty i don't care well and we went back and forth because i've got a one wheel and i really like it and you were saying you know you like a one wheel too but you think for commute the bikes e-bikes probably better and i would somewhat agree with that i mean i think well i have a boosted don't forget and I rode my boost at home from the coffee shop, which was three miles from my house. Uh huh. Fucking blew my legs out, dude. All the cracks well, in the sidewalk. Dunk, 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 well, dunk, now you're dunk, not going to have dunk. that problem with a with a one wheel, right? Because they're soft and squishy, and they eat those cracks up like oh yeah. 
for breakfast. It's, it's not a problem. Um, I enjoy riding my one wheel. I haven't actually ridden it in, in the last week or so. Cause I've just been busy, but, um, I, I love my one wheel. However, I think a one wheel is a more fun. useful thing and fun because you can not only use it for commuting, you can also use it for like getting really good B roll because you know, you can like ride it, you know, with a gimbal and really get some, I mean, you remember that fucking, uh, DJI video that Pete did and he was on a one wheel a lot. And some of that footage is, fucking ridiculous um and they're super fun and all that stuff so i think a one wheel is a tad more versatile but just for strictly commuting you have to think when you're on a one wheel man because it's yeah. still a skateboard type thing right so if you hit a bump you got to know what you're doing or you're going to go off that motherfucker and wreck where a bike you can kind of just relax and ride right yeah they have them with suspension now hell right they have they have an e-bike that does 60 miles an hour which right that might that might be a little much i know it's illegal here so here i think it's under 750 watts is legal and you don't have to register it you don't have to have plates you don't have to have a motorcycle license you can just it's, ride it's that just thing. it's a bike it's a, right. it's, a it's, it's considered a moped uh, an okay. electric moped and it has uh pedals and an assist motor so it's not all electric right. so it's not a motorcycle um but the there's one that's nine hundred dollars and it yeah, folds up and you can throw it in the back of your truck and you get a well, that's that's the other thing right one wheels are not nine hundred dollars yeah <laughs> you, can get, you can get a you can get a pint for about that my mm, son I've, i bought him i bought him a pint i think it was right about i've mm. i've heard from multiple people get the full size or don't get one i would probably yes i have the full size the xr um and my son has a pint i i will say a lot of full-size people ride the pints and i ride his pint and it's perfectly comfortable but I do think the XR is more comfortable for a, a bigger person, like a full yeah. grown, you know, for and the I'm kids, a big guy. I, I think, think I'm the, over the weight limit for the pipe. Actually. I don't does it have a weight limit. I don't even know if it has a weight limit, dude. That thing will fucking book, bro. That thing's pretty. Um, I, I don't, I don't know. Does yeah. All, a, all electric things have loads, right? Anything you ride or drive is going to have a load rating. I'm sure, but is um, it that low? I would think it'd be pretty heavy. I think I mean, it's like 220. Oh, is it? It could be. I mean, you might be right. Um, it it feels different too. It's it's more carvy because the wheel's more rounded, so it's more like where the, yeah. the X the XR the wheels got a uh, unless you change the wheel, you can get aftermarket hey, wheels. My, but, my birthday's Monday. Maybe I could just get a one wheel for my birthday. Dude, I love that one wheel, man. It's a lot. I Damn have it, you're gonna make me get a one wheel, aren't you? Dude, I have eaten shit on that thing a couple times though. I will tell you, you high probability of you eating shit. Like I've eaten shit. Because the thing is, it's so easy to ride. You get comfortable on it really quick, and then you get a little too fucking brave. And Pete told me, Pete said, you don't think of like mobbing on a one wheel, right? He goes, one wheel is for cruising. You just cruise, you carve, you have a nice little relaxing ride, you have fun. It's for enjoying the good weather. He's like, if you start going out there and really pushing the limits of that thing, you're going to eat shit. I mean, you can do yeah. it. There's people that ride trails on and stuff, but they eat shit. Like, I'm not trying to eat shit. It, it, I just I don't know that, like, I, I definitely want an e-bike for commuting. One, the truck isn't really bad on gas at all, but I'm taking short trips. So, you know, it could be better. The Land Rover is horrible on gas, mm -hmm. and I'm in such a small circle. Like, mm -hmm. it's a four or five mile radius total. Like, I really feel like I could I could commute on something like that, but I also feel that the one wheel would not be a good option for that because the, the shop is across town. So the way here, there's sidewalks the whole way. To the right. coffee shop, there's sidewalks the whole way. And I would say about... 80% of the way to the shop, there's sidewalks. Mm -hmm. With a bike, I don't care if it's a sidewalk or not. That thing does 35 miles an hour. I can ride it in the road. Whatever. One wheel? Well, and here's the other thing. And this isn't me trying to talk you out of a one wheel, because I think you should get a one wheel. I love mine, and I think they're a lot of fun. But strictly for commuting you don't want to push the top speed on a one wheel. That's when you eat shit. Top speed and range range on those is like 15 miles right. a range on an e-bike. Right. Even the cheap one 
the range is like 50 miles. It's like yeah. 30 to 50 miles. Well, on, on it, the Super it, 73, they can push 70 some miles. Yeah, I mean, it charges fast though, right? For what you're talking about, you could make it to wherever you wanted to, throw it on a charger where you got to work. And I mean, it, it 15, I don't think the range is necessarily an issue, although the range is way longer on e-bike, but the speed thing, right? Like the top end on my XR is, is it 15 or 20? I think it's 19 miles an hour. I can't remember what the top speed on my I XR hit, is. I want to, I want to say I it's 19. 25 on my boosted and it was like, mm. The problem is when you start pushing the top speed on a one wheel, you get what they call pushback, right? Yeah. Which is where it starts leaning back like this, telling you, hey, bitch, you're at top speed. You need to slow the fuck down or this motor is not going to be able to keep up. Well, if you ignore that, then it goes boop and you fly off that some bitch like Superman, right? Um, and so if you're really commuting and you're pushing that top speed because you're just cruising along and I've missed the pushback a couple times. Like it did it, and I, I guess it did it. I didn't feel it, and that motherfucker nose dives, and I went off the yeah, front. Yeah, I, I got a little pushback when I was on the phone with you riding my boosted that day. You got of a pep, tiny little yeah, pebble. I was about to say, you got pebble back, right? Yeah, I, was, Which, I was turning, so I'm leaning full speed on, on the, the highest mode. Got my AirPods in, I'm talking to Jeremy, and I'm carving, I'm in a curve, and I hit a pebble. And I go flying and I land on my feet and I run it out, but my AirPods go in different directions and I almost ate shit. I didn't even know you did it. Yeah. We're on so the, I, we're on the like, phone. <laughs> I was in a warehouse and my AirPods went under pallets. I had to like look around and find my AirPods. And I'm still finally talking. Get them, you know, I get them back in my ear. Jeremy had not skipped a beat. It was like <laughs> at least two, three minutes. And he didn't even know that I wasn't there. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Yep. I, I didn't even know it happened. But the thing about, good about the one wheel is you that won't happen, right? Like you can go over fucking rocks, curbs. Like it's that one wheel will go over some shit. Like you're not going to eat a pebble and stop that thing. Like that's not going to happen. Yeah. The pushback is a, is a real thing though. You got to pay close attention to that. Um, it, you because it, it it going off that thing nose diving is not fun. It oh, is I'm not. Sure it's not. It, it is and not. See, I don't know if my sister. I think my sister has gotten. I've seen some road rash on her. My brother-in-law for sure has eaten shit twice. Pretty oh, hardcore. I've, I've eaten shit twice hard. Hard. So it's, it's I mean, like, I was fine both times, but I mean, I, I had some road rash and my my uh my ego got reset a little bit. You know, I was getting comfortable thinking I was had it under control and then you eat shit and you're like, "Okay, I need to back off a little bit. I, I'm not as good on this thing as I think I am." <laughs> but I want you to see this though. There are some really cool e-bikes. Like there's one from a company called Onyx. It's an RCR and it's made to look like a cafe racer the um, i like the one that pete has what is it called the super 78 super or 73 super, super yeah, 73 I'm, I'm strongly considering one of those but they're very expensive those things are dope i i just i don't know man i'm kind of in the camp of like if you want something electric get an electric skateboard if i was going to get something like that being that some of those were like 3500 dollars, i would just get a fucking motorcycle right i mean that, yes yeah, but then you need motorcycle license and then you got to get it registered yeah i mean i have mine so yeah that's crazy looking dude that thing <laughs> that's, looks awesome that's that's funny as shit i like it i like it yeah that but, thing's really sweet i don't know how much these are uh <sighs> onyx motorbikes that one is forty five hundred dollars yeah see like if i'm gonna spend forty five hundred dollars i'm gonna buy a proper fucking motorcycle bro like that's and, just me right and, like this one is the one that does 60 miles an hour and has, I think, like a 70 mile range. But you know what I'm saying, though? If I'm going to spend that much money, I'm going to buy a motorcycle. I mean, I get it, but I I think this serves a different, different. No, uh, no, I get it. I mean, and, you know, it falls back to each his own, right? Like everybody has their yeah. own things they need stuff for and whatever. Um, I don't plan on spending $4,500 on a new no, bike, dude. but I think the Super 73 I was looking at wasn't the top tier trend. It was a S2, so the RX is their top tier. I mean, I think Harley's coming out with an electric motorcycle, if or already has. I'm not sure if they have or, or there are. I think I've heard. I don't remember if they actually released it or not. I can't. I don't remember. But you can get a Harley electric bike if you really just want electric. No, I just like the idea of a like an e-bike. I just really like the idea of it. Mm -hmm. But you can't tell me this thing doesn't look sick right here. These are twenty seven hundred dollars, so a little more palpable. 
it up. Ow, motherfucker. Look at that. It has a Super 72 or 73. Um, yeah. Super 73 again, S2. But again, man, that's 2690 That's 2700 bucks. Yeah. That is a lot. You could get a proper motorcycle for that. You could. Um, then you would you have could, a motorcycle and not an e-bike. Right, which is going to last basically forever. Where an e-bike, eventually that battery is going to dump out on you. It's a battery. You could technically just replace it. Maybe. Or maybe that company sell replacements too. Or maybe that company goes out of business. Who knows? I'm just saying. Yeah, but there's no. I don't Har think Harley's been around for like 100 years. I'm just saying. Yeah, it's also a Harley, so not I mean, going to own that. You, you probably have to turn a wrench on that thing every now and then. I'm not going to lie. That's what it's called, live wire. It's 30k. Yeah. Though. It's expensive as shit. Um, that thing well, is fast. It's an e bike. As fuck. Like, it's not an <laughs> e bike. It's an electric motorcycle, which is a right, different beast right. entirely. Um, there are some electric motorcycles I've seen. There's a guy on YouTube who built an electric motorcycle, and it is wild. All you hear when it passes by is the chain. Yeah. is <laughs> and, and sometimes you can hear like a weir or like a like a whir. Like it's just, you hear yeah. it, but it. It's just, I don't know. But that, that crazy he said, he said is strange because it's like no, no lag, just all torque, just. Yeah. Phew, well, it's the same gear. as like it's the same as the Teslas, right? Like yeah. it's just bizarre because it kind of defies your idea, the idea you have in your head of a motorized vehicle, <laughs> right? It's, yeah. it's like, Hmm. Um, I built it, it in his garage. Let me see if I can find it. This is the weirdest sounding motorcycle I've ever heard. Have you ever seen Jay Leno's jet bike? Yes. That thing sounds crazy as fuck because it sounds like a jet engine. It's like, whoop, it's got that like, wind of a, a wine of a, a jet engine that thing sounds crazy as shit jay leno's got some dope ass cars and motorcycles and stuff. why can i not find this what are you trying to find that guy's electric motorcycle i don't know um also there's a kit that you can get for uh converting a, a mountain bike which i already have into uh -huh. an e-bike it's 500 I'm actually surprised there hasn't been more of that, right? Like kits that convert existing bikes into e-bikes. Yeah, so. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. He's hacking together a chain. That thing's dope looking. That looks like a little cafe racer or a little bob or bobber or something. That kind of has that look to it. Well, was, it's unfinished at this point. That looks like a little cafe racer, though, with the way the handlebars and stuff are the way that you, that's, I mean, that's a, he's got to figure out a way to make that big square box a little less, um, <laughs> Boxy. that, that, that kind of ruins the look, right? You got to like incorporate that a little better. Um, yeah, this thing, this thing is sick. He said it's fast. Well, I mean, you know, who was I talking to about this recently? And, you know, they were saying that originally they thought that when electric cars first came out, they were slow. And, you know, it's like everybody's like, man, nobody's ever going to go for electric cars because you want that muscle. You want a fast car. You're not going to buy a fucking electric car, right? This is back years ago when they first came out with like the first Hondas and stuff like that that were slow as balls. Now, like the fastest car production car made is that damn Tesla. That thing is so fucking fast because there's no gear. There's no, it's just instant torque. Like you said, it's just, it just goes, bro. It's yep. fast as shit. I, I'm going to go with Steve Patterson, though. He said, buy a motorcycle like a man. That's what I'm saying. Either buy it's one with fragile in your masculinity. <laughs> I'm happy to drive. Uh, an e-bike or ride an e-bike around. I don't need a motorcycle to feel like a man. Just like I don't need a card to I remind mean, myself that I'm a man. Here's the thing. I don't need any of that shit either. I sold my motorcycle and I catch shit all the time because people say I print my beard too much. And I'm like, well, <laughs> fuck you. I like smelling good, bitch. I don't want to stink. <laughs> um, no, I just, I get it. I get why. And going back to, I get why you would want an e-bike over a one wheel. I do think for speed and f you're going to get there faster on an e-bike than you're going to get there on a one wheel just because of top end, right? The top end on that thing. What'd you say it is 30? Uh, most of them are like 35. Technically, right. if it does over 25, I think it's illegal to be unregistered in North Carolina. Um, but 
point is that's almost double the speed of a one wheel. So you're going to get there twice as fast, right? Yeah. And I've got the range. Like I would have to charge it like once a week, right? twice a week, you know, like it's, I think it's more suited to what I want to do. So I'm going to give you shit because I still say that those e-bikes are a little overpriced. They need to figure out a way to bring the price of those things down. No, there's, there's one I was telling you about is $800, $900. Yeah. I mean, that's reasonable. Yeah, but that the one two you, is the two the two you showed me were like twenty eight and fucking well, four. Yeah, grand. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can definitely go cheaper, but it doesn't look as nice. So the one I was talking about, and it's funny, I was trying to to work with these guys, and they gave me an emphatic no. And I'm like, okay, okay. <laughs> they were just like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, all right. Uh, Talon did a video on this one, and it looks pretty cool. It's just. Okay, no, I take that back. It doesn't look pretty cool. The specs are good, um, and yeah, it looks that fine. Definitely, that definitely does not look cool. Let's just be real. But it folds up. Yeah. And it's yeah. like a third of the price or fourth of the price, depending on which one you're looking at. That and thing, for real, though, looks like you should have on a cardigan. Like, <laughs> I mean. Yeah, it doesn't look great, but like the specs are all there. The specs for are the, there, and, it, and it's the not. And it's not five. Th- See, here's the thing. If all the e-bikes were that price, I think people would be a little more has a little more prone to pull the trigger. I have a real hard time spending $4,500 on an electric e-bike bicycle bicycle yeah. that I could literally buy a very nice Harley. I think I paid, it's been years, but I think I paid like 3,500 or four grand for my Sportster. It was a 1200 R. It was the last year they were carbureted. I can't remember what year it was now, but it was the last year that Harleys were still carbureted. I wanted one with a carburetor in it. It was the last year they were car because when they had carburetors, you didn't have to do all this crazy like fucking. You put pipes on it, and the new motorcycles like you put pipes on them, and you got to reprogram the whole fucking bike because the all the fuel injections fucked up and stuff. Because I didn't want to deal with all that old carburetors. You could put new pipes and adjust different air filters and stuff, and you could fuck tweak your carburetor a little bit and you're good to go. Um, so I got the last year that they had a carburetor on it and it was a 1200 R thing was dope. It was bad ass bad to the bone. And I think I paid four grand for it and it was in great shape when I bought it. And I customized it quite a bit, but, um, it was in great shape when I bought it for four grand low miles. Well, yeah, I don't think anybody's arguing that you can get a bike, like a, a motorcycle for that price. Uh, but I, I think mean, they're how, also how are they selling those things? things? What do you mean? I mean, how are they selling them at that much money? That seems crazy high. Well, I think I would be okay with a Super 73, right? That, that mid-tier Super 73, 2700 bucks is still a lot. But you're saying that to me, and you bought a $2,000 one wheel. That wasn't so two. It was uh, 1790 something. Are they that much? I don't remember it being. I thought it was like 13 or 14. Nope, they're eighteen hundred bucks, my guy. Are they eighteen hundred? Are you shitting me? Did I really pay that much money? <laughs> I don't remember. That's why I haven't bought one yet. Yeah, one Are wheel, really? seventeen ninety nine on their website. Yes. God, dog, I don't remember paying that much. Um, yeah, but yeah, but I mean that's so, a full thousand dollars more than a one wheel, though. And you get a lot more out of it than a one wheel. It's not as fun to ride, I don't think. But right. actually, I, I I take that back because Maddie, I watched a video from Maddie, and he said. The one wheel is fun. The bike is more practical, but they're actually a little more fun to ride than the one wheel because you don't have that like thing in the back of your head. Where you're like, when is this thing going to dump me? You know, <laughs> like, well, I mean, I, I, for sure. Um, you definitely, you definitely have that thing in your head. I don't think everybody that rides them do though. Ant has a, has a really do good point. Have watches that cost that much. Uh, don't you? Uh, I don't. Uh, well, uh, uh, sort I, of. Yeah, but a, a watch you could also resell down the road or hand down to your kids, and it's going to be worth as much or more depending on the watch. Um, where an e-bike, probably it's six, six months, months later, road, yeah. you, you, it's going to be worth five hundred bucks, right? Like I bought so, a boosted board at twenty five percent off, and three <laughs> months later, I saw them selling for like I, I waited for them to go cheap. I wanted to boost it. I didn't want to spend a lot for it. So I bought mine for seven fifty because I got uh-huh. the, the cruiser style. Uh-huh. And I'm like, man, I got a good deal. And then like literally a month or two later, boosted goes out of business and I saw them on eBay for like 
300 bucks and i'm like shit <laughs> <laughs> so our, our boy ant has a, a little bit of a point but at the same time i will rebuttal that by saying there's a little bit of a difference in something like an e-bike that isn't going to be isn't going to retain its value where luxury watches oftentimes gain in value right okay so my i i agree to a degree but i also like if i get two or three years worth of of transportation out of that e-bike oh I'm no happy. yeah i mean yeah i mean you know? i get it i'm happy with I, that i just wish the they one were one wheel so yeah so the one wheel you're looking at eighteen hundred dollars for basically just fun it's just for fun and you can well, use I mean, it for a video people, a lot of people but, use them for commute but how many times have you used it for b-roll so far i mean i haven't because i haven't been going out of the house to do that kind of stuff but i mean when and if we ever get back to having a normal life uh, and stuff uh, and I get back to going down in St. Augustine and getting B-roll and stuff. Yeah. I mean, I can see for sure um, that that would come in handy. And I mean, that's part of the reason why I got it. Cause I'm like, Oh man, you could not only could I do this, but I could get some really dope B-roll with it. Um, so, I mean, you know, it's kind to of be a multi fair. You could probably do the same with an e-bike. It would uh, be a little sketch, but you could hold yeah, a gimbal and yeah. pedal. I mean, I've, ridden bikes with one hand it's yeah it'd be a little sketch. it's doable it's doable um, I, I but basically it's my point is you're paying eighteen hundred dollars for just fun or 27 for something that has some practicality and and utility beyond just having fun you can still use it for fun but you can also you know commute with it and that's the plan and it may fail it might blow up in my face it might not be worth it but i think i'm willing the, to the 800 try it ones the, the is the is the money zone i i it just seems like they could make a cool looking e-bike in the same price point that they could make a one wheel. So right? I could make my own. And I think that's something I want to do on the channel. I think I want to try to make my own e-bike. And I don't mean, I, I want to convert my mountain bike. I have a mountain bike at home. I want to convert it to an e-bike because that just well, seems like a fun project. Well, the thing is you have this new shop and you've talked about wanting to do, you know, build projects. There you go, dude. E-bike build. Yeah. Sound, sounds sounds like sounds like a video series, yeah. Or mountain bike conversion. Well, I, I'll do that. I'm gonna I'm a hundred percent gonna convert my mountain bike to an e bike, just to see. It's like five hundred dollars for the kit, and it's sold on Amazon, so or eBay. Um, I am about to do a series on smokers and smoking meat. So I mean, smoking hey, smoking meats. Oh, dude, I love smoked meat. I, I don't know how. I, I don't know how you could. You could probably incorporate that in a tag somehow. I could just um, remove smoked. Yeah, right. Um, I already I already clipped one from earlier where you you were talking about meats. Oh, I'm sure. But there's something. I mean, do you like do you like barbecue? You like smoked meat? Yeah. Does anybody not like it? Is that a thing? Is there? I, I tell you, sociopaths. Like <laughs> Fucking yeah, I. It's. Do you like brisket? What's your favorite? Yes. What's your favorite barbecue? Do you, are you a pork butt rib brisket? I mean, and don't say I like it all because I get it. I like it all too. But like, if you had to, if you had to go to, what's yes. your favorite? What's your yes. favorite? Yes. <laughs> I think. I love brisket. I think brisket has to be my favorite. Brisket is damn delicious for sure. I do like a good pulled pork sandwich with some coleslaw on it, though, man. You put some coleslaw on a pulled pork sandwich with some mustard sauce. I, I, I'm a mustard sauce man on pulled pork. I like that. Oh, boy. Brad Smith is talking about pork ribs. Mm, ribs are good, too, man. Dude, spare. I see. Now, here's and this might start a fucking fight in the, the comments. I prefer a spare over a baby back. I'm not a huge baby back guy. I like a spare rib. Yeah, see, this, Chad, this, I mean, this. that was before Chad even said that. Spe I I agree, Chad. I agree. You know what he also likes? Every I enjoy a good truly. I don't like truly. God damn it! And it does not, and it does not go good with. Um, tri tip is really good. Tri tip's really good. Barbecue. If you put something on a fucking smoker, I, it's pretty much going to be good. You, Dude, you know I, one thing I love that we have not talked about. What smoked salmon? I could eat it all fucking day. All day, you know, every I don't day. Think I've ever, I think all the stuff that I've put on a smoker, and I've smoked a bunch of shit. I don't think I've ever smoked salmon. I don't think I've ever smoked fish. Period. Well, you can 
the smoking process, if I'm not mistaken, is different for smoking fish. Because you will just it? what I'm gonna I want to look. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm looking up what this thing is called because I'm gonna ask you if you've ever had one of these because I saw this today and I was like, oh, I'm putting one of those on the smoker immediately. Oh my god, they got another operator. This just popped up when I opened up my phone. What the TR four operator? Have you seen that oh. shit? It's uh, oh. I had one. Yeah, I had one. Oh. It's a big boy. They only made it in D two though. Oh, that's a bad looking. It was like almost four hundred dollars, and it was D two. <sighs> it's a, it's a, not new. It's a dope looking fucking knife. He said it was also new. like this long. It says another operator joins the elite lineup with the TR four operator, full size four inch blade, sporting all the features of the operator series with the most sought after knife. It's uh, not new. Go look at my ProTech video. I have one in there. Is it the operator though? The all black with the tritium button and all that? Yeah. In fact, I, I bought it and I gave it to um, Adam Buzz Buzzby huh. from the show Out Daughtered. I, just, huh. I gave it to him. <laughs> I'm trying to look up what this thing's called. Hold on. What's this thing? Oh, wait. This thing's. Why isn't this playing? Oh, it's probably hooked to my fucking thing. Hold on a second. This son of a bitch. What are you doing? I'm trying to do it. What is this called? What is this thing called? Hold on. I'm trying. I'm trying to see if you've ever had one of these. I saw this armadillo eggs. Have you ever seen these? No. Dude, hold on. This is a game changer. I'm making these like within the next couple of days. You take a jalapeno and you stuff it with cream cheese. Then you wrap it in ground pork and sausage then you wrap that in bacon and then you put it on the smoker until the, it's all done and the bacon's crispy and it looks like an egg because it's it's like you know and then you cut it in half and it's bacon and sausage and jalapeno and cream cheese get the fuck out of here come on you know that shit would be good that sounds good but also i'm on a diet yeah but i mean that's <laughs> super like low calorie low fat oh. <laughs> <laughs> look, at, look, Jeremy, look at this. Oh, that's it. Yeah, that is it. Well, then why does this fucking post say adding to the line? Why Why is this? How old was this video? August 26, 2020. Dude, I had that thing in like May. So why why, why, is, why did that post say adding to the operator line? Did they give you an early release and it, it just wasn't released to the public? Huh. Nope. It was available. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I just it popped up in my feed for some reason. This is this is the dude. Let me see if I can. This is the dude. I can't see that. Oh, there we go. Oh, dude, I love jalapenos. Jalapenos so are so good. That's a lot of cream cheese, though. There's a lot yeah. of cream cheese. Oh, look at the oh wrapping it in sausage. Like wrapping I could have it. one of those, and that's like. On the smoker. It's like a third of my caloric intake for the day. Oh, dude, but look, hold on, wait for it. Oh, wait for it. Oh, get the fuck out of here. Come on, dude. You know that shit would be delicious. Come it on. It doesn't look good here because it was just super blown out. But Oh, well, yeah, I mean, I'm sure it's not. But, man, let me tell you what. <sighs> dude, so good. Oh, Josh says, try an armadillo egg but covered in fish fry, battered and deep fried. That just takes shit to a whole... I would say it would be a it would be a, a tie for me, right? Because if you do that and deep fry it, that's going to be de fucking delicious, okay? Because bacon deep fried gets crispy with batter. That's going to be delicious. But the smoker, you're going to get that smoky flavor, which is also fucking delicious. So, this is why I'm fat. <laughs> yeah, this is exactly. This is exactly. <laughs> so, so what was Jeremy saying earlier about cholesterol? Yeah, hey, look, I'm not saying I'm always do what I say. I'm just saying I, I know the right things. I don't always do them, but I know <laughs> I was in that life for a long time. Scotch eggs are good too. Yeah. Somebody said Scotch eggs. Scotch yeah, eggs had, are very similar. I've had so many eggs over the last month. Okay. Here's the egg question then. And my wife hates these and it hurts my soul that she doesn't like them. Do you like a soft boiled egg? Mm, okay. So I'll put it this way. Until about six months ago, I only ever ate scrambled eggs. I did not like over easy, over medium 
sunny side up. I didn't like any of that. Uh huh. Now I almost exclusively eat my eggs um, like over o- medium over easy, or, over easy. or over easy. Yeah. I. You say that the same way. I. Uh, I. Yeah. I and I just did that. I, I know love a soft boiled egg, man. I've got a little egg boiler. Oh, wait, hold on. What Chad say? You guys ever uh, what? Blow that up. Been invited for a shit. barbecue. You guys so ever been excited invited to see some hot dogs on a stupid grill? <laughs> yeah, dude. It's like, don't call that, don't call that a barbecue. That that that's fucking hot dogs. Like that that's not a barbecue. If if you call, if you call me over a barbecue, you better have some fucking pulled pork or some ribs or some brisket or something that's proper barbecue. Not burgers and hot dogs. That ain't barbecue. That's just shit. That's just meat on the grill. But, Which but is to go back that. to but to go back to your question about the soft boiled oh, yeah, 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 eggs. Yeah. I don't think I've ever had a soft boiled egg. It's always been hard boiled. I know I've what got, it is. It's just not I've got boiled an, as long. I've got an egg cooker. Uh they were super, super cheap. You can get them on Amazon for like 10 bucks and they make a perfect fucking hard, soft boiled egg. And you just put it in there. And what it is, is it is it cooks the white. Perfect. You it cut that bitch in half though. And the yolk is, it's like an over easy egg and hard boiled egg form. Right. So the, the right. yolk is running and dude, I'll couple pieces of toast, a couple soft boiled eggs. Pfft, forget about it, dude. Delicious. De- a couple pieces of toast. Uh, wow. Wow. I'm not low carb, bitch. I, I'm all about the toast with the carry gold. Slather some carry gold butter on that toast. A couple of hard boiled eggs. Oh, Knock that's right. Back. You're keto, so you can have all the butter and <laughs> the, the butter and the, eggs. the carbs. Uh, oh, well, but, yeah, uh, the, the bread. Yeah, the bread would fuck up. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I need to look into that Ezekiel bread. A friend of mine was talking about it. I saw people talking about it in here earlier. I need good. to find some and, and try it. But um, you know, my, people are gonna my have, breakfasts have mainly been. God, eggs, I've been doing eggs and more eggs. <laughs> God, eggs galore. Uh, I woke up this morning. I'm just like, I don't even want to think about eggs. Um, but it's been two eggs with three egg whites and a piece of Dave's killer bread for toast with either either avocado or hummus on the toast. And that's been my breakfast for three weeks Dude, straight. Some of the people in the chat might give us a little bit of a hard time because it's a little bit of a little bit of a California bougie kind of kind of breakfast oh, uh, or or jalapeno palmetto cheese spread uh, pimento cheese. Dude, I love pimento cheese. Uh, palmetto. So. That's the brand. It's it's a very specific pimento cheese. OK, it's the pimento cheese. Well, uh, I don't <laughs> I'm know. Not a, I'm not a pimento cheese. Snob. I just No, I, I tell you the the. Ezekiel bread. I think we talked about this on one of the episodes recently. Ezekiel bread with avo- some mashed up avocado with some everything but the bagel seasoning and an over easy egg. Yep, that's been it's, like it's core breakfast for me. It's it's a little oh, California. Minus yeah, I do feel a little bit, little bit like a bougie fuck eating Ezekiel bread with like avocado toast and stuff. <laughs> but here's the thing: because there's so much fat in an avocado, like good fat, and then the over easy egg, and then you get a little bit of that bread. You know, like. You eat that for breakfast, dude. You're full for a while. Like it's satiating, yeah. right? Like oh, you're, yeah, you're not sure. you're not hungry, right? Which is is good. Um, but I, I do feel a little like a bougie, dude. Speaking of uh, pimento cheese, have you ever had Benedictine? I don't think so. Benedictine is like a cucumber cr- uh, cream cheese type spread that they. It's big in Louisville, where I'm from, and uh, eat it with like potato chips. Man, it's green. It's got like onions and cucumbers and and uh, cream cheese. I don't know what else is in it, but it's always over with the pimento cheese, which is what made me think of it. But other than where I'm from in Kentucky, I don't know that I've ever seen Benedictine anywhere but there. I've which never heard of it. Yeah, a lot of people have never heard of it before, but it's some good shit, man. It's it's good. It's good. Somebody uh, earlier had said uh, over um, soft boiled egg with ramen. I know they they put the soft boiled eggs in ramen a lot. Oh yeah, um, the, just pro tip: something I bought I think last year. I didn't put much thought into it. I just knew I was cooking eggs for breakfast a lot for Eleanor. She put uh-huh. on this egg binge a while back, and now I make them for her, and she like throws them at the dogs. Uh, but I I was at Marshall's, and they had it was called a crepe pan. Have you ever seen them? It's a very just thin, like, very thin frying pan. No, I don't think I've ever seen that. 
very thin. You're... There's like just a tiny little lip on it, and it's meant for you to put eggs into, and it fills up, it spreads the eggs out, and makes crepes. So you can like roll it up and put shit in it and do all the crepey type stuff. Yeah, but are, are crepes eggs? I thought crepes were like a little thin, like pancakey type thing. I think it, I don't know what a crepe is, but I know that I've been using it for eggs. And oh my God, I, I use that like every single morning. And then one day it was dirty. I didn't feel like cleaning it. So I just grabbed another frying pan, threw some eggs into it. And I'm like, what the fuck is this shit? No wonder I hate cooking eggs. Like it didn't I work. can't, dude, it's just horrible. <laughs> it's like it, was a hor- it was a horrible experience. Yeah. And the crepe yeah, crepes are like, cra- crepes are thin French pancakes. Yeah, I don't think I don't think I don't think eggs are crepes. No, but it's a crepe pan. It said for eggs too. Oh but, no, okay, okay, okay. I, I was just making sure I understood what a crepe is because I, I was thinking maybe I was wrong about crepes all these years. <laughs> I'm I've, like, wait a minute. I've never had a crepe, but I have a crepe pan. So this is what I bought from Marshall's. Oh, or- see, my man right here, whistling whiskey. He knows about the Benedictine. He just said it right there. Ohio slash Kentucky delicacy. So this right here, a crepe pan, huh? Very, okay, very so it's like thin. it's like a, it's like a crazy low profile frying pan. Yeah, yeah, that would so, make it much easier to make an omelet or something because you could get under it and the wall of the pan wouldn't be in the way. So when you got to flip shit, it's a lot easier. Yeah, it's really good, except for when you you know realize exactly how many eggs you can put in it which is like four to five. Oh, Jesus. And then that's you lot, get that's one, a lot of eggs. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, I'm doing two eggs and three egg whites. Dude, right? can I just say fuck egg whites? Can I say fuck egg whites? <laughs> you can, but I put fuck spinach egg in. whites. Egg whites are the are most useless shit. Like they're horrible. They're fucking horrible. They're, put spinach in them. They're no good they're with spinach in them. No, they're not. They fucking suck. The best what I did part of the, the other egg day was spinach and mushrooms in egg whites, and it was really good. No, it's it was not really good. You were fucking good. hungry. It wasn't good. It's was fucking hungry. You're probably right. It's, but, it, it, because let me tell you something. The, 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 we, me and my wife have been on diets and been eating crazy, like clean, and eating like a lot of like you know weird fucking recipes that like substitute wheat fl- or like almond flour for normal flour and shit because you're trying to be super healthy and you're hungry because you've been on a diet and you know, all this stuff. So you, you think it's delicious. And then my friends that are on diets come over and we're like, this is so good. Try it. And they're like, that tastes like fucking shit. What are you talking about? <laughs> they're like, bitch, you're just hungry. So it tastes good to you. It's not really fucking good. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, anyway, so I put, you know, I had been putting uh, two eggs and three egg whites in there. And then I just apparently got one big egg or maybe it was extra full or something. And then that shit started to just spill over the side. And it's not like just a little excess spills over. It's like egg. Once it, once it goes. Once it, it starts, it, it just pulls everything <laughs> with it. And I have a gas stove top. So it oh, pulls no. under the grate and it just pulls out. And I'm just like, Fuck. I've just cooked egg whites onto my stove top. Like, yeah, you're, that's, that's a, that's a, that's a, pulls right up. that is a fucked up way to start your day is what that uh, is. What you just going back to what you were talking about, like uh, finally like eating something. Well, not finally eating something that tastes good, but thinking something tastes good. Uh, Saturday, I've been eating really, really clean for th- three weeks. It was actually three weeks to the date on Saturday, and uh, I was down like ten or eleven pounds. And my friend texted me and he's like, "Hey, you want to meet me at the brewery?" And I'm like, "Yeah, I'll do it." So take the whole family out and all the food they have, there's food truck. And normally I would get just like a Philly cheesesteak or something from the food truck. They didn't have that. They had, uh, I think one was like a smokehouse burger that had bacon and, um, fried onion rings and stuff on it. And then the other one was a pimento cheeseburger. Mm. So I got Alex one and I got me one and we cut them in half and split like switched. So we could both try dude. I like took one bite and I'm like, Oh my God, this is so good. So good. I get through the burger, I eat the fries, and then it hits me. It was like instant regret. I'm like, <laughs> what did I like, do? You're like, I feel like a bag of shit. I'm like, what did I do? I felt so full. And I, I did like rough approximations, like the caloric intake of that one meal, and it was like 1,800 calories. And I'm like, that's what I'm eating in a day. Wow. <laughs> so we went home. Well, we, we went home. 
and I sit down on the couch. Alex is putting Eleanor to bed. I'm holding Flynn, and I, at some point, pass out. It couldn't have been long after we got home. Alex said she came down, got Flynn, put him to bed, and she came back to get me and was, like, shaking me to wake me up. <laughs> Your food asleep. coma. Food Dude, coma, bro. I fell asleep somewhere around 10 p.m., and I woke up at, like, 2.30 on the couch. Dude, uh-huh. I, w- I still, I like, 2.30, I'm like, where am I? <laughs> when did I get home? Like, I had some beers at the brewery, but I was not drunk. Like, it, it was just food. I was intoxicated by food and I felt like shit the next morning too. Bro, I've 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 had food regret. Like I I I'm saw I don't remember where I saw it, but we made burgers one night and we made grilled cheeses for the buns. So it's like grilled cheese sandwich, burger, grilled cheese, you know what I'm saying? Like like a three thousand calorie right, burger. <laughs> right. And it was so, it was good, but at the same time, it was one of those meals that after you eat it, you feel like a complete piece of shit because you're just, it's so much grease and butter and cheese. And you're just like, you just feel like, I know I've told you about this and I think I've talked about it on a podcast, but I, I remembered the other day that I have a photo of it. So down the street from where my office is, there's a place, um, see if I can find it, a searching sandwich. There's a place called the Smoke Pit, and they that have. can't be bad. Oh, this, dude, uh, it's so me, good. Me, uh, so this. How do you sandwich, say this again? Quierda? How do we say this? You said it right. I don't remember. Quier, how, Quier, Quierda. 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 This is good, by the way. It's a very nice cigar. Anyway, sorry. Dominion Rep. So this. this sandwich is, uh, there's pulled pork barbecue mm. on the top. Mm. Now, see, that's what the fuck I'm talking about. Give me some of that. <laughs> this is now for anybody sausage. listening to this, anybody listening to the, the podcast, not visually, hey, go to fucking YouTube and watch it. You need to see this in person. But this is like some kind of Texas toast with an absolute fucking mound of smoked meat and some kind of jalapenos or pepper jelly or something on top. I can't tell what the fuck that is. Uh, that is pickles. Is that pickles? It looks like yeah, it's pickles. I, I think it's pickles. It might be jalapenos. Um, like like so candy jalapenos or something? Smoked, smoked sausage, pulled pork mm-hmm. barbecue, mm-hmm. burnt ends, mm-hmm. and then um, I'm pretty sure that's bacon right there. And then there's something else on here. I don't know. But then you get a side of whatever you want, mac and cheese, sweet potato fries, whatever. This sandwich, when you when you go to take a bite of it, it's about this tall. Dude, that sounds delicious. And I think it's like $15 for the sandwich, but it's also, well, dude, like it looks like there's about, four, yeah, I was about to say there's about four fucking pounds of meat on there, right? <laughs> so big. Um, I keep seeing uh, a lot of people in the comments saying stuff from Texas. Um, we got a lot of Texas folks in here. Yeah, um, Texas people are proud of their barbecue, but let's be real. Don't you fucking talk about shit about Texas barbecue. I'm not. Okay. Okay. I thought you were gonna say, let's be real. Their barbecue sucks. And I was about to be like, Taylor, Texas barbecue is one of the godfathers of barbecue. Okay. Like no. it's, okay. no, I was okay. going to say that Texas people are really proud of their barbecue, but let's get this straight. Okay. Barbecue is fucking good. Okay. Yeah, it's true. I really don't care where it's from. And most of the time, like there's so much similarities. Like there are differences like North Carolina, you have Eastern and Western barbecue and they are very different. Um, I'm pretty sure Eastern barbecue is vinegar based. Western is like sweet, saucy. And I'm, I'm much more Eastern, like vinegar. Well, a, based. Lot of time, a lot of time in Texas, they're big into simple, right? Like I know like a real Texas brisket is fucking salt and pepper, man. That's all yeah. they put on it. Like they don't put all these complicated rubs and sauces and glazes and all this shit. It's fucking salt and pepper. And then you put that bitch on a smoker for a minute and get that good smoke in there. And that's, you know, they say, let the meat and the smoke do the talking, right? Like, yeah, and that's why I don't really like the, the Western barbecue as much. It's just too sweet. And like, I'll eat it if that's what's available. Hell yeah. Right. If I have my choice between the two, I'm going to take vinegar base all day. And a lot of the time, if it's served to me without a sauce on it, I just eat it like it mm-hmm. is, or I'll put some Texas Pete on that shit. Mm-hmm. Which, I mean, I, again, is like a vinegar based, but whatever. I do agree with you that I like all barbecue. I like all the regions of barbecue. I will say 
I probably prefer t- if I had to pick a favorite, I would probably say Texas style stuff is probably my favorite. I do enjoy them all though. Um, I don't think any of them are bad. Um, my point but, is just that like all these different regions are like this barbecue is the best. It's, it's fucking all good. Smoked meat. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> you put meat in a smoker. It's going to come out pretty tasty unless you fuck it up. I mean, you can fuck right. it up. I fucked up some barbecue before. I'm not going to lie. Dude, the steaks that I cooked earlier this week, not good. And I, I will throw Alex under the bus. She ruined my cast iron skillet. What? Yeah. What? So I had cooked some stuff in it and it really caked on. Like the nonstick just wasn't doing its job. It caked on. I was cooking something really hot. So I put some water in the pan and turned it on and was boiling water and I was going to scrape that. Uh huh. And I'm holding Flynn. I start feeding him and I'm like, hey, can you get that? And she's like, I don't know how. She didn't put soap on it. Okay. She? No, she just let it go. Oh. All the water. All the water evaporated and it just caked on even worse. Oh no. The, like, that's not oh, I mean, that's yeah. not as bad though. You could probably still salvage that. What's bad is when you look over in the pan that you've worked the worked on seasoning for like fucking years and years. They got dawn and a fucking scrub brush, and you're like, Oh, we'll fucking kill you in your sleep, bitch. Get away from my fucking iron skillet that I've been working on the seasoning for fucking not to mention I I thought about doing a video on this. I sand all my iron skills down, right? Dude, I need like, to. I have to now. I have to start over because well, I, I started with a, I had a, a scouring pad. I tried sand or sand. <laughs> I tried salt. I tried everything on it. And did you try just letting worked. it soak for a while, like to soften it up? Just put some water and let it soak. Oh, they it, sell- it, it cooked on there. So that became part of the seasoning. Did you was- get any of that chain mail shit that they make for cast iron skillets? Uh, I had some copper. And uh, I don't know what happened to it, but I got um, not a Brillo pad. They got this stuff that looks like chain mail, and, but it's Bright. just like a little square of it. Yeah, I know what it, I know what you're talking about. I just got Scotch Bright and took it down to the iron, like just. Oh God, that's painful, dude. Because you work on a fucking good seasoning for a minute, bro. Mine's to the yeah. point now where I could fry an egg in that bitch, and it just floats. A little bit of little bit of butter, egg. That thing just floats around in that iron skillet. Like it's 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 a beautiful thing, man. It's, but I. If you have like an old antique cast iron, uh, I forgot the name of the company that a lot of people lodge. But anyway, no, not lodge. Lodge is the new ones that you need to sand down. It's um, fuck man, what's that old company that? Anyway, it doesn't matter. Well, well, I'm off the weeds, but the old iron uh, skillets were pretty smooth. They used to actually smooth them. They were pretty. All the lodge stuff is like fucking sandpaper. It's pretty rough, man, and. Yeah. So I put a flapper wheel on my grinder and I grind all that down and you don't want to get it too polished because then I don't know if your seasoning will stick good, you know, but I grind down a lot of that shit to smooth out the lodges pretty substantially before I start the seasoning and then I season them up. And well, man. I'll put it this way. I was scrubbing on that thing so hard. I cracked my wooden handle off of it. You cracked the wood. Oh, somebody said it's called the ringer, the little chain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen them. So now I've got to fix the wooden handle so I can grab that shit. Like anyway, uh, after I, I had, did all that, I tried to cook some steaks in it, and they just yeah, it's not the good. same. They were not it's good, not, it's, it, they, dude. They didn't that, sear right. They stuck to the pan. Like the whole thing was just busted from the start. Griswold, Griswold is the is the company I was thinking of. The old Griswolds, like those things are nice. They're expensive though, man. You're gonna spend two, three, four times as much on one of those as you would on a uh, lodge. Like they're expensive, but the one my mom gave me is awesome. I don't know what brand it is. Probably it's, if it's old, your mom's had it's probably like an old Griswold or something. a lot I don't of those older ones. Old. It's ceramic on the outside. Ceramic. And it's ceramic on the outside. It's cast iron on the inside, and it's that's got, some of that like lay. What's that company that does like the Dutch ovens? My my wife has one. It's like yeah, it's kind of like that, but the handle's like this nice wooden handle. Like it looks super nice, and I love that thing. But my, my cast iron's all cast iron. I have a silicone sleeve that slides over the handle so you don't fucking blow your hand out. I think, I think it might be time to, to buy a new one. I don't know that I can fix the wooden handle. Like I can glue it back together and clamp it, but I just bought a uh, a cast iron that bitch was heavy as fuck too. Um lodge griddle. It's like skillet, like a, a griddle. Griddle's where it's like just a big square, no handle. Like big rectangle, flat on one side, the other side's got 
you know, the yeah. race where you can get like score uh, grill marks or whatever to do like reverse sear stuff on the smoker. I'm going to try to do some reverse sear big old fucking ribeyes here pretty soon or something. You put it on the smoker, like a, like a Traeger, you put it on a smoker um, at, you know, a low temperature and get it. It's kind of like sous vide them, but you do it on a yep. smoker, you get to it. And then once it gets to temp, you have your iron griddle on your smoker. You crank the smoker up to 500, get that griddle real hot and then <laughs> sear them bitches out. Mm -hmm. Come on with your, come on. Mm -hmm. uh, my Blackstone, uh, dude, fuck those things. Seriously. Wow. I have one. I, I don't know what Blackstone is. Those gas griddles for outside, like a flat top griddle. Oh, yeah, yeah. I didn't know they were called Blackstone. Yeah. Um, That's a brand. It seems, it seems like those things would be uh, pretty cool. I actually thought about getting one just they for like. They are an absolute bitch to keep from rusting. Oh yeah, I you have gotta season. season I no, I seasoned the shit out of it. So I took I took hours one day, sanding it down, getting it totally cleaned. I bought it from a friend, and it was seasoned okay, but it had some rust spots. So I uh -huh. sanded that shit down for hours, got that thing just mint, and then oiled it, seasoned it. I spent hours, like half a day, working on this thing. Huh? And it still, even with a good seasoning, it still rusted. Cooked on it, covered it put it in my garage i looked at that thing like three days ago it's fuss it's fucking pitted like bad oh my God. yeah i don't i don't know man usually if you get a good season did you put more seasoning on before you put it away you know what i like to do to keep my seasoning good on my iron skillet is you ever heard of a crispy stick no it's it, it's uh it's it looks like a deodorant stick but it's it's called a crispy stick and it's for iron skillets and stuff but it looks like deodorant oh, my mom told me about those yeah yeah, yeah. It, i think it's like vegetable based or something or it won't rot like if you use like a lot of people use bacon grease to uh, to season skillets and stuff back in the day but the danger about putting bacon grease on is if you don't heat it up it can you can grow bacteria and shit right because it's an animal product this stuff you don't have to worry about that like when you're done using it Put it back on the stove, warm it up, little quick run with the crispy stick, take a paper towel, and just move it all around and kind of like wipe most of it off and it leaves a nice sheen and it keeps your it keeps your your seasoning good and on there and gives it a nice protective coating after every time you use it. What I want to try and do is see uh, if you replace that big flat top and cast iron, it's like 150 bucks, which is what I paid for the thing to begin with. So at that right. point, I might as well just get a new one. Mm -hmm. um, I want to see if they do a stainless top for one. Like like they you have it like a like a in in a commercial kitchen or something. I want to see if because if I have like a like, top, like at a Japanese steakhouse. Yeah, so if I have a stainless top, it's not going to be nonstick all the time. But you can fucking just scrape that shit. Like, are those stainless or are they like carbon steel or something? They're stainless for sure. Yeah, because they're 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 they only would, the only know. black spot is in the middle where they, the high heat's always at. It is yeah. it is a shine like a silver color on the outside. I don't. Would, I think they make stainless tops for some of them, but they're also like two hundred dollars. So the difference would be replacing a cast iron with a cast iron, paying what I paid for the thing, or replacing it with a stainless steel for a little more than what I paid, and it not ever rusting ever. Cast iron is so good though, man. It is good, but at the same cast time, iron. like I just struggle with it, and I think. Uh, the smiling beard guy is talking about how he loves it so much. I think a lot of it has to do with if you can have it in a covered area and if you're in a high humidity place, like I cannot keep that one from rusting. And I've, I've actually done that twice now, cleaned it oh. off, seasoned it. And that thing just will not stop rusting. That's crazy. I, I uh, recently bought a, a new stick burner offset smoker. I got the Traeger and then I got an offset smoker because I, want to do some comparisons i used to use an offset smoker all the time then i went to the traeger just because the offset smoker takes so much maintenance to smoke you have to sit and you have to sit there all day if you're going to smoke something where the traeger you can smoke more often because it's super easy um but they tend to rust right because the firebox gets so hot that then after it heats up that high you go out there the next day and you'll have rust all of your fucking firebox if you're not careful um but if you season them, even the outside of them with oil, it, it usually puts a pretty good protective layer and usually don't get the rust like that. So I'm, that's why I was saying I'm surprised that that thing rusted like that if you had a good coat of seasoning on it. Um, 
I don't know. But then yeah, again, I've, you 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 rust fucking everything. It's it's probably because you. If I had it, probably would have done that. It's probably from you being near it. You probably rusted it. So there's definitely been some change in my sodium intake uh, yeah, since you, I started eating, and there's it's still green when I wear my my bico. I still get a lot of green, but it is like significantly less, dude. significantly less than before, dude. Hmm. I wonder if that's something to do with your diet. That'd be funny if it stops. If if you get your weight, if you get your weight down a little bit and you clean your diet up and that shit goes away, I'm be like, dude, that was just like toxins leaving your body, like r- rusting everything. All the salt coming through my skin. <laughs> <laughs> dude, I don't know, man. That's crazy. Uh, yeah. You wanna you wanna start taking some questions? Yeah, yeah. Let's take some over questions. Two hours. I'm gonna somebody, bounce before said, it gets too late because I've said, been going hard lately. Somebody said something about pellet grill. Yes, uh, my trigger, that is a pellet grill, and I love that thing. I'm going to be doing a full review on it pretty soon. It's an Ironwood 885, I think is what it is. Uh, what you smoking, Jeremy? I, I've been smoking a lot. I, there's going to be a lot of smoking. Let's just talk about that for just a second. I, I think they're food. asking what you're smoking right now. Oh, oh, oh. You, uh, so you got me on the smoked meat. I think they're talking about that. I, I've, I've been on a smoked meat kit. This is uh, me. Fuck. Taylor, I always say me. Kierda. Is that right? There you go. Yeah. Yeah. It's a Steve Saka. It's a Betty. It's a Betty Betty Good. I am enjoying it Betty Betty much. I've not had a cigar in a hot minute. You know, you want to know why? It has to do with my diet. There's no calories in a cigar, bitch. Well, I don't yeah, really I mean. know. Oh, I, because you like the beer and whiskey. <laughs> yeah, I get you. I go well, to smoke a cigar and then I pour the whiskey. And what happens is I drink through my whiskey and then I drink more whiskey and then I drink more whiskey. Coffee. And I, Just do coffee. Well, the problem is I'm smoking at like 11 do, p.m. Well, do, them, or do a cigar earlier in the day with the coffee. Switch your switch your cigar schedule, man. So Basically, little, I'm here. <laughs> yeah, so go, out, go outside, take a lunch break. Get, this is a, a good cigar. Eat you a nice lunch. Get good and full. Get you a coffee and a cigar. Have a full coffee and a cigar. <laughs> well, yeah. So okay, maybe not full. You know what I'm saying. Though. Um, but yeah, man, that, that's a, another um, another good um, time to to have a cigar is with coffee. I actually sometimes say I enjoy cigars more with coffee than I do. With, you say that a lot, actually. Yeah, uh, I, I do. could smoke cigars in the shop. I did go. I did. Uh, I did go have a. Uh, Nice little tailgate party by myself at the shop yesterday. Speaking of coffee, hold on. Let me see if I have this. Mike says no carbs and whiskey. That is true, but I'm not counting carbs. I'm counting everything. And there are definitely calories in whiskey. In fact, uh, this right here, if I'm not mistaken, is about 90 calories per ounce. And when I'm pushing my, my calorie budget to like within 50 per day, I can't even have whiskey. Um, I'm not super, super strict if I go a little over whatever, but like, I'm trying to be pretty diligent. And if I blow it one day and then I blow it the next day and I blow it the next day, like what's the point? I got to (laughs) stay, stay on top of things. I'm sorry. I don't mean somebody said, so yeah, (laughs) that's hilarious. That's my side. That's, that's awesome. That's my side chick. Um, this is another review coming up pretty soon. Oh, that espresso machine. <laughs> oh, dude, that's the baddest fucking espresso machine. Oh, my God, I can't wait. I got some some reviews coming up that are going to be, I think, going to be fun because it's a little different than my normal whiskey and cigar stuff. I mean, I'll never stop doing whiskey and cigar stuff and knives and all that, but um, there's going to be some smoker reviews coming up and some espresso machines and shit. I think it's gonna be, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. It's, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. Um, what I saw something. Anyone hear the news on Alec Bradley's cigar aging barns? Three of them burned down. Oh no! That's no, I haven't bad. talked to. Um, I haven't talked to um, Alec in probably a couple weeks. Maybe that's where he's been. He's been dealing with some shit. I have to call and see if uh, he's all right and everything is good. I, uh, I've just been busy. Uh, to my knowledge, that patina shirt is on his store right now. It is. Patina, patina, patina. Uh, and also, uh, patina, the patina, 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 the other color, patina, 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 patina. Sorry. The other color is patina, 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 patina. Gray. <laughs> and, and, and I didn't even pick this. The guys at Bunker 
when I asked for the mock-ups, they picked this and they sent it to me as one of the mock-ups. I'm like, dude, you nailed it. That's perfect. It's like a gray. And then it's like the same green that you get like when copper patina is like the Statue of Liberty. The patina, patina, patina is in like that like patina it's green. Like almost I, like seafoam green. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what, what color to call it. It's like patina green. But yeah, it's a gray. It says patina, patina, patina in that green color. I think it looks pretty cool. Um, I wouldn't have thought of that and picked it myself. And they sent it to me and I'm like, you guys are fucking brilliant. That's the perfect color. Like that looks awesome. So uh, yeah, they're out there in a couple different colors. There's a few new shirt designs and beanies and hoodies and there's some new shit on the website. So go go check out the website for sure. Oh, and uh, also back in stock. The, nice. uh, we've been people have been asking about those. The, we had the flasks in stock. We didn't have the leather sleeves, but the leather sleeves are back in stock. So if you guys have been wanting one of the flasks, go get them. Go get them. Um, on the way, do you keep your humidor at and temp? Uh, usually I keep my humidor at about 60. I think what 60, I have the lower 64, is it 64 or 65? Bovida? I can't remember. 65 Bovida. Yeah, 65. Um, I keep the 65% Bovidas in there, so I keep mine at 65 and I keep it at 65 degrees also. Um, Depending where you're at, 65 may or may not. And if you have a wood humidor, I would probably not recommend keeping 65% Bovida packs in there because if you have a wood humidor and you have 65% Bovida packs, your humidity is probably going to be like 62. <laughs> so that's a little low. But if you have like a cooler door like I have that like does not leak any humidity, it holds you, whatever fucking packs you put in there is what the humidity is going to be. Uh, I find that cigar smoke better at about 65%. The 70s, a little, little, little boggy. Uh, did I get a blowtorch yet? Is that the first shot purchase? No, I'm not getting a blowtorch. Uh, first shot purchase, you, you first big shot. Better purchase, get a welder. First big shot purchase is actually going to be a big compressor. So I have a little baby compressor right now, the portable. Uh, I'm going to get a big compressor because I need that for multiple things. But yeah, one of the you, you, main yeah, you reasons, get a every shop needs a compressor, bro. One of the main reasons I'm going to get a bigger compressor is for a blasting box, so I can uh, blast yeah. my own stuff. You get, you got to have a pretty good size air pre, air compressor to push one of those. So I, I've talked with Rick a lot about it, and if, if you read like what you absolutely need, people are going to tell you that you need like, um, I can't even remember the metric. What is it like? Uh, can't remember the running PSI. It's like 20 or 30 PSI. Yeah, I wouldn't At, know on that one. Whatever it is, um, it's crazy. And that basically means you need some massive commercial compressor right. that's like $6,000. That's not true. Like he said, if no. you're not doing constant work on it, like right. if you're doing a little sandblasting here and a little sandblasting there, you can get Which by is all you'd be doing. Right. I'd be doing like a knife. Like two I or will, three minutes. I will say this. Whatever compressor you think you should get, get Go one bigger. size up. Yeah, get, get get one size up because yeah. So I'm getting the biggest one that Lowe's sells. Oh yeah, then you'll be fine. Um, but a step down from that one. So the the biggest one they sell that you you have to have it hardwired in. It doesn't like plug into an outlet. Right, right. I'm getting the, the big, biggest one that you can plug in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and that it's should be plenty. It's probably like what 100, 50, 100 gallon. Uh, I'm not sure. Probably I can't remember, but it's quiet, and that was one of the things. Um. It's very quiet. Nice. So um, uh, compressor is going to be the first big and then a blasting cabinet. I got to get my anodizing station set up. And I cannot talk about it. I absolutely cannot talk about what's next after that. Um, but it's it's big. And it's going to be very time consuming. And it's going to be really, really, really awesome. But not going to talk about it. I'll put it this uh, way. I have to finance it. And I don't finance many things. Oh. I do not finance oh. many things at all. I have to finance this. Oh, I don't know if I've even heard of that. You haven't. I haven't told many people. I'm keeping that one close to my chest. Oh, okay. Well, it's going to be really sick. This should be interesting. Um, you need a good bench. You need a welder. Yeah, I do need a welder. I need a good bench. Everybody needs a good workbench. Actually, usually multiple good workbenches. So the cool thing about where I moved in, the owner was like, go through everything that's there. And if there's anything you need, keep it. A lift. That's a good point. A lift. 
Yeah, a lift is is on the books. Um, I don't think it's something I need right away because I've already done the lift kit on the Land Rover, and I will need to lift it some to get it off the ground, work on it. But for now, I think I can get by. <laughs> Alex in here, she's like, I know. Ha -ha. Yeah, she <laughs> yeah, if she doesn't know, then you're keeping it super fucking tight to the chest. Yeah, because... I, I think three people know. Three people. I, I don't think you told me about it. I, that doesn't, what you said, I, I didn't. Um, what else we got in here? Have you ever tried a quick smoke method on pulled pork or pork butt? Uh, no, I don't. I mean, no, usually it depends. I just usually smoke it for six to eight hours ish, depending on the size of the butt and all that till internals about 160, 170, somewhere in that range. Um, and then I wrap it and then, uh, finish it in either butcher paper or aluminum foil, depending on what I'm doing with it. One time I did a Hawaiian one where you wrap it in banana leaves and stuff. And it was actually kind of cool. Um, but, um, yeah, I, I find it six to eight hours when you get to that stall temperature around 160, 170, it's taken on about as much smoke as it's going to. So it doesn't hurt to wrap it and finish it up a little quicker by wrapping it and softens up the bark a little bit. So the bark's not like fucking beef jerky. Um, but no, I don't know. I don't know what quick method. If you can finish them quicker than 10 hours, I'll be curious to see it. And if, if it produces the same quality, the barbecue, good barbecue takes time. There's no, there's no way to shortcut it. It just takes time. I cannot um, wait until I move into a, a bigger house so I can get a smoker. I just don't have room outside for that kind of stuff. Yeah, dude, I can't believe you don't smoke. Like that seems like that'd be right up your alley. That seems like something it is. Into. It is, and I want to, and I've wanted to for years, but it's just I don't have space or or like I don't have the outdoor space for it. I hate it. <laughs> Taylor's building a robot to get him a truly, and Alex says, "Damn, you guessed it." <laughs> <laughs> Taylor should just convert the shop to an axe throwing range. Um, True. speaking of, speaking of that, note to self. Splitting wood with a hatchet is not fun. I did it today and it was not a good time. Well, an actual no. actual wood splitting axe works a lot better. I had to split some wood today and all I had handy was a hatchet and uh, I got it done. But some bitch, I about worked myself to death trying to split those logs. It was not a good time. I was like, good Lord. My fucking forearm was all puff burning and felt like I'd done about a million curls with that one arm. I was sweating. If I would have just had a proper axe, I could have split you, you, him in no time. You almost had some Taylor forearms. <laughs> I'm telling you, bro. I was like, fuck. I might be like heavy and overweight, but I've always had like massive forearms. <laughs> Popeye. Well, that's yeah. Weird. And when I lose weight, I'm gonna look weird, man. You gotta switch <laughs> it up every night. <laughs> that's where you get them forearm muscles. See, Chad says low and slow, no substitute for the best fight. I agree. Chad, are you a big, you know, he's piped in a couple times. We've talked about barbecue. I'm, I'm maybe hearing that Chad is a very good barbecue man. I think maybe we've hit a chord with Chad. No, Chad, Chad is, Chad's the kind of guy that invites you to a barbecue and he's cooking fucking hot dogs on the grill. No, Chad is, <laughs> Chad kidding. is, uh, Kyle says smoke at the new shop. Now that's a possibility, but the problem is I have kids and I can't be away for like six to eight hours, you know, tending you could, the smoker. Well, no, but if you're going to be at work all day and you're going to be at the shop working on stuff, you could get there in the morning. Now a brisket, you probably wouldn't want to do that because briskets take a while. Um, but like ribs, you can get done in five or six hours. Easy. Uh, a smaller pork butt, you could get done in eight to 10, which, you know, full work day and then throw it in a cooler and take it home, you know? Be, well, be the done problem the also is that I'm already going to be lo like running out of space at the shop. So, uh, we'll oh, look. see. But I, not to give too much away, uh, we've been talking about putting in like an outdoor whiskey bar at the shop. Mm. It's a long story, but I'll, I'll tell you about the plans later. It sounds really sick. I don't know if it's going to happen, but we'll see. Mm. There's there's a lot of stuff that I'm not sure is going to happen, so I don't talk about most of it, but. <laughs> couple quick things uh j derek 1994 first time he's caught the show live he's in aussie land Welcome. my man my man tuning in you can watch from, the train wreck live yeah <laughs> tuning in from the other side of the world 
Um, and then Chad came in and said he smokes meat at least once a month. There you go. What kind of smoker you got, Chad? Are you a pellet grill man or a stick burner man? I uh, am about to explore the differences there. Uh, get a trigger with the Wi-Fi. That's true, dude. That's that new trigger I have, bro. Let me tell you about that thing. Now, some people that are like traditionalist and like the old wood-fired smokers say that pellet grills are no good. I will argue I've had both. And while I think you get slightly better flavor out of a real traditional like log burning smoker, man, it's fucking real close. And that Traeger is 150 times easier. Because so the question I have is that do they have pellets that'll give you different aromatics? Yes, they've got okay. every wood you can imagine. They've got post oak, they've got uh, maple, they've got apple wood, cherry wood, uh, pecan or pecan, depending on where you're at. Um, pecan, that's what you put under your bed. Uh, <laughs> I like that. I heard somebody uh, say that joke the other day, and I just I groaned. And it's I, just, I just funny, though. It's funny. <laughs> I like it. P, that's what you put under your bed, but um. Uh, yeah, you can get every time of wood over there. and it's all wood. Like people think that there's like other stuff. It's just the, the oils and stuff in the wood when they put those shavings under, under pressure is what holds it together. It's a hundred percent wood product. So, I mean, you get that real wood flavor and dude, I did that brisket recently on it. And let me tell you how nice it was to fill up a hopper, throw a brisket on before I go to bed and not have to fucking worry about it. It just went all night long. I woke up the next morning and checked on it and it was good. And it just maintained that temperature all fucking night without me having to babysit a damn smoker. See, that's beautiful. nice. But at the same time, like I love the smell of like a campfire, wood fire. Like it smells like that. I know, but like splitting the wood and throwing some wood in like. And, and just, here's the thing. And, and that's I why think, I say. Sorry, go ahead. I didn't mean to cut you off. No, I was just saying like, I think that adds to the whole thing, right? The whole experience. It may that, be tedious. But there are other things we do that are tedious because we prefer to do them the old-fashioned way. I agree 100%. There's nothing quite like when you have the time sitting out there, splitting wood, putting it in an old-school stick burner, drinking some beer on a nice day. I get it. Like, I get it. Trust me. Point is, you don't always have time for that, oh, right? Yeah. Like, it, it takes all day, and you've got to maintain that thing all day long. I don't have time to do that on a regular basis. In a perfect world, you do what I do and you get it. Well, you should just be Mark Zuckerberg smoking well, you, them neats. <laughs> Dude, that was a, smoking them meats, smoking that meats. He must have said that 500 fucking times, smoking them meats. But in a perfect world, you do what I do and you have both, right? You yeah. have a stick burner for when you have time to do your smoke meditation, drink your beer, your whiskey, whatever, and spend all day doing that. It's great. But if you like barbecue like I do and you want it on a regular basis, you want it during the week when you don't have time to do all that shit, you get a pellet grill and you can cook whatever you want all the time. You know what I mean? So one thing that I, I want to bring back um, as I expand the content of my channel back mm -hmm. to where like I really want it to be, um, and I don't plan on going camping and doing videos on that all the time, uh -huh. but one video series that I started and then fell off on was campfire cooking series where I had people challenge me to cook something over a campfire. Uh-huh. And dude, it was just so much fun. And one of the first ones I did was pizza. And uh, I brought a cast iron skillet. I should have brought a Dutch oven or at least a lid or even put some of the tinfoil that I had over it. And that would have been 10 times better. But dude, that series was just so much fun. I only did a few of them, but yeah. cooking over an open fire is challenging and fun. It's super challenging. Um, what is that cooker that they that a lot of people I see? Cause I, I think I'm about to build an outdoor kitchen so that I can have a grill. And I, I want to also not only spare, I, I, I'm very familiar with the stick burner and I'm very familiar with the pellet grill. Uh, I want to start experimenting with all oh, like the green a, egg. Well, a green egg or a, what's the other one? The, the red one, a Komodo Joe or Komodo Joe. Um, same thing, right? Same, but no, there's another, you were talking about, cooking over open fire there's another type of grill that i see a lot of these barbecue guys have and it's like an open pit fire and then there's like a big grate that's on a thing that they can raise and lower you, you just spin like it no it's like a big handle that you turn and it lowers the grate up and down over like the open fire i, forget, I don't know what kind of grill those are called said, there it Santa is Maria. yeah 
Um, that seems like that would be your kind of thing too, man. If, if you ever get a spot where you got a house, you might want to put one of those in because it's like an open fire that you're cooking over, but it makes it a little easier because you can adjust the height. So I would imagine that helps you with the heat because yeah. it's hard to cook over a fire because it's fucking hot, you know? Yeah. Um, so yeah, Santa Maria style grill. I think that'd be fun. But yeah, I'm I'm about to do all kinds of videos on, I'm, I think I'm going to get a green egg at some point too because man, have you seen people do the pizzas on the green eggs? Because those fucking things get hot as shit. And they put the, the the stone in there, and then they do the, the green egg pizzas. Because those things get like six, 700 degrees or some shit. You're, you're going to have to stop talking about pizza. I don't have many weaknesses in this world. I really don't. Like, as much as I love whiskey, I could walk away. I could walk away from cigars. I could walk away from just about anything. Pizza. There, there are three things I can't walk away from. Steak. Raw pizza. salmon and fucking pizza. God, well, you know, pizza. Well, you know it's funny. This that, belly the, that the, I had the, before, I still got a belly, but the belly I had before, all that additional pizza. Well, <laughs> it's funny that, that tonight we talk about food more than any other episode we've ever talked about. It is the night that you're on a diet. <laughs> you're fucking talking about Let's food. See, I, don't, <laughs> I don't feel bad. I'm not hungry. I'm not craving anything, but That's you mentioned good, fucking man. pizza, and I'm like, you're like shut up shut, stop talking about pizza. Go. See you guys. <laughs> i'm out i'm gonna go get fat and eat some pizza what does chad say and the uh, thing is pizza click, inherently click isn't that so bad. don't forget about it yeah, yeah the thing is pizza inherently isn't that bad uh-huh if you can control yourself everything you in have, moderation right you can have a slice of pizza or two Every, even but the problem is if i got a pizza in the room and nobody else is eating it I'm going to eat that shit. And I do, I, pizza is one of those foods, which is why I said that green egg thing interested me because I like those like wood fired pizza places where they get the fucking pizza. It's all in the ceramic chimney thing and it gets all hot and they cook the pizzas. They're delicious that way. The crust gets that slightly like crispy kind of situation going because it's on a uh, proper fire cooked and uh, so dude, they're good. When I own a house, I really want to build a pizza <laughs> oven like a wood fire pizza oven outside. Well, that's I what I'm really saying. You, could, you, I think you could get a similar result with a green egg and then you could also do barbecue and all kinds of other stuff and it won't cost you $8 million because I imagine building a pizza oven would be kind of expensive. Uh, it's not, there, there's a, a he's like, I don't give oven. a shit. I'm doing it. <laughs> there is a, there's a pizza oven that you can buy for outside. That's only like a few hundred bucks. Oh, cool. Uh, so Chad said love and offset a bit tougher to babysit with the full house of kids. Like, yeah, dude, that's the thing, right? I have a these electric smoker with some quality wood chips. Can be, uh, Chad, get a pellet smoker, bro. Get a pellet smoker, get a Traeger. Or I, if you I had to include his, his correction. Cause he did say, um, an all fat event. <laughs> well, he did I mean, mean to say day. <laughs> I mean, that was kind of a, Fro that was a Freudian slip, right? Yeah, like, for sure. Um, but you need to get a pellet smoker, Chad. I'm telling you, man, you'd love it. It's even more convenient than one of the electric smokers. It, it the wood chip time that you're talking about. It they're fucking fantastic. And if you don't want to, I, I strongly recommend Traeger. I love the Traeger grill. I'm gonna do a review on it soon. It's my the Wi-Fi and shit is next level with being able to like leave the house and adjust the temperature while you're out. Like it's fucking great. But if you don't want to spend that kind of money, you can also get some pit bosses for relatively uh, affordable. And they also work really, really well. And they're, they're all of awesome. these are so expensive. The green egg and the Traeger. Yeah, dude, it's all, but it's, it's good shit. That, that fuck those green eggs, dude, they'll like outlast me and you. I mean, they're solid. Oh, yeah. Like we're solid. Like, the, Traeger Ironwood series, eight, eight, five pellet. That's, that's, that's the one I got, dude. It's so $1,500. So dude, Jesus. it's so, bro. It's so good though. It is so good. It is so fucking. All right, I'm gonna have to start smoking some shit at the at the shop and get Traeger to. Dude, Traeger, <laughs> Traeger, you, you, that's I signed up with them, um, and then eventually got in touch with their marketing team and stuff, um, and th that's how I got the Traeger. They sent one to me because I I was running a pit boss before I got the Traeger, um, and that's why I said I have experience with the pit boss and it was great, but I will say that Traeger is, you're going you pay more for it, but that motherfucker's the shit. It's no joke, bro. I mean, well, I'm going to try to smoke some meats. I'll maybe I'll do it at the shop. It's no joke. It is no joke while I'm working. But um, I, I think it's probably a good place to wrap it up. I'm tired. I got to get up really early in the morning and I got to edit all this and whatnot. But I've been here since 
eight or nine this morning. I don't know. It's been a long day. <laughs> <laughs> Chad says, send me your send pit me balls. Your- <laughs> Buddy, that would be a lot to ship. That's a big fucking thing. I don't even know how much that hey, would be. It would be how about it, this. But it's about way, the for first the, one to come see you gets the pit boss well, and the humidor. Well, here's the thing: for the amount it would take to ship that pit boss, you could go buy one. <laughs> you can. They're not. You can get them relatively inexpensive. Not if I drive there. Uh, well, that's gas money. I got a diesel, a, dude. I got a oh, diesel. That's true. that's true. You can get a good. You pit do boss not live. Me. You don't live more than seven hundred miles from me, which means it would take one tank to get there. Ah, uh, oh, that's true. Costco does do events with Traeger, and you can get some good deals with Tra- on Traeger at the Costco places. That's right. They don't I have. About they that. don't have a. Um, they don't have don't a have, Costco near me. What? No, nope. really. BJ's, um, Sam's Club, no Costco. Um, we'll have All to right. do well, a whole episode on. Let's do meat. <laughs> one more question. <laughs> that's a good one. Uh, let's do one more question each. I knew you were going to say that. You <laughs> I, knew, I knew when I said meat, you were going to go there. And I saw it coming. I saw it fucking coming. It's a good one. Um, a good one. Uh, somebody had asked earlier about when the, the episodes go live on podcast. This is just to cover it. Uh, they usually go up, what, like a day or two after we do this live on YouTube? Day or two. You don't the even know anything I do, Jeremy. It's, it's the next day, right? Don't you it's do it, the, like, next the next morning? <laughs> okay, that's yeah. I, that's why I said within so, a day. I didn't know so, sometimes if you got busy and it ended up taking a little longer. So, uh, Jeremy, I asked him to take the photo for this picture or the thumbnail for this uh, episode because I don't, I don't have a gym access. I mean, uh, there is one downstairs, but it's not mine, and I didn't want to just like barge in and take some photos. Uh, so I asked him, and then yesterday I'm like, "Yo, thanks for sending me those photos," and he's like, "I was planning on taking them tomorrow, which which is today." I was like, I always schedule the live stream for the day before so that people know that we're, we're live streaming. Um, except for the days that I ask you for the photos because they usually don't come in until, you know, a few hours before we go live. <laughs> so, uh, Hey, <laughs> I, I, I don't have a defense for that. I, yeah, I, he's, I, like, oh, he's like, since when have you wanted to do that? I'm like, since I forever. always have. I always have. <laughs> that was your except, answer. Like, <laughs> except for when you're taking the photos, then I do like, them, you know, the day it, of. Your answer was since we've been doing the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> and then somebody's like, when do the episodes go live? Uh, the next day, Jeremy, just to let you know, because you apparently didn't have the answer either. <laughs> the next morning. Oh, that's funny, man. <laughs> Oh uh, shit. Um, somebody there asked me go. when will the leaf and barrels uh, start back regular or even the Provada unboxings. Um, I'm, I'm starting to get back on schedule. I appreciate everybody being patient. I know patient. I know my schedule has been a little wacky. The beginning of my year with my dad passing away kind of got fucked up and I was way behind on shit. And then I was anyway, lots of excuses, but uh, the point of the matter is I'm, I'm getting He's back been into smoking a, those meats. I've been smoking those meats. Um, I'm starting to get back into my groove um, and get things lined up. I got a lot of cool stuff lined up that's coming soon. The leaf and barrels, I will try to get going back regular. I just talked to Brian today. I've actually got a Pravada video. It's not going to be a Pravada unboxing. He's got a contest coming out. Dude, he's giving away. I think we talked about this a little in the last podcast. He's giving away a fucking Dodge Charger. Like what? Like what? Like I'm going to give away a man card. This bitch is giving away like a $50,000 car. Like, uh, okay. Um, but uh, I'm going to do an episode with that coming really soon. And then I talked to him about sending me some boxes and, and doing some Pravada unboxing. So hopefully we'll get back into a rhythm there. I don't do as many unboxing with Pravada anymore because um, they honestly just don't need. It's a closed club at this point. They're not accepting new members. So like over publicizing it like hurts them a little bit because then people get pissed off because I'm doing videos on something that nobody can join. However, I do want to support the people that are currently members that want to see the video. So there's a balance there though, right? The long story is we're going to try to get back into a rhythm, but the reason they slowed down a little bit is because the club closed. You can't get in it right now. So anyway, we'll get back. So lo- long story long, very soon, my friend, hopefully within the next month, we'll, we'll get everything rolling back to some kind of reasonable schedule. Sorry, that was really long winded. <laughs> So is everything you say. <laughs> uh, the, the Blocklinger says, 
do an episode on pizza. That would be really rude of us to do that for Taylor right now because he's on a diet. We just talk about his favorite thing. I'm not even on three a diet. Hours. Like I'm just like I have to stop. Like my first cheat meal was pizza. Um, and that was like a week into it. I was like, I've been doing really good. I'm down like six pounds. Like I can have some pizza. And uh, what happened is I ordered a pizza. Alex and I ate some. She had like a slice or two. And then the next day I'm like, shit, this is like a $30 pizza. I'm not letting it go to waste. I'm going to eat some more pizza. And then the next day she didn't want any pizza. So I'm like, okay, day three, I guess I'm having pizza. <laughs> I'm not wasting it. <laughs> I had pizza for three days. I can't do that. So if I do eat pizza, I have to go somewhere that does buy the slice. And there's like one place around that does that. Uh yeah, I'm with you though. If it's around, I'm gonna eat it. Yeah, it's I a don't thing. waste food if I don't. I, yeah, have I feel to. like I, I'm a big fan of that. I'm like, hey, <laughs> it's there. It, why does my last with... question have to be any updates on the Taint fan? Uh, I don't need a uh, Taint fan. I'm in a new space, as you can see here. New space. This right here is my own personal air conditioner. I don't need a Taint fan. Taylor is in a air conditioned his 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 twig and berries and taint and that whole region is in a very comfortable climate controlled environment that no longer requires bro a taint, a taint fan. We have a freeze warning tonight. Man, it, it was, was hot as fuck here today when I was out there splitting that wood. I was sweating my balls off. Tomorrow the high is supposed to be 67, which I know is is but for us for it to drop that much. So yeah, I imagine it's probably pretty cold there tonight. It was, it was 60 degrees here today. It may have been a little more than that. Uh, freeze warning tonight a few days ago it was like 80 but is it is i know for us it was pretty fucking hot like the last couple weeks and then it's supposed to drop down to high tomorrow 67 but then i think like friday or saturday the highs back up to like 80 like it's just like a quick little yeah uh the people in my discord there were several that got like four inches of snow last night out of nowhere uh where was the there was one more i did a thing shirt so i've got a couple of shirts coming I did a thing is going to be one of them. Um, oh, okay. That's not the one I was talking about earlier. The one I was talking about earlier is about like never financially recovering from this. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> you'll see. It's going to be great. I'm really excited about that shirt. We still have to get the shit lined up so we can do some of the podcast shirts. You talked with the guy today. I did you talk today, but it was about, the- but it was about like, my taxes we me and you need to get on a call <laughs> together with him so we can set up the thing he's so we can a, start to get in touch with sometimes so we can start dropping some some merch for, for the, the podcast stuff yeah um, i agree for the for the folks and um do super chats and all the things you can do right now we can't do any of that stuff because we don't have a way to do money in taxes with both of us so um <sighs> but we're gonna we're Talking gonna get about that. Talking about all that energy that I've got. <laughs> I'm well, over here yawning. In, I, def- I'm a- in defense, it's 1044 at night. So, I mean, it's okay to be out of energy at this point, right? I, I have a lot of energy until I don't now. I used to just go and go and go until like three in the morning. No problem. And now I'm like. Here, here's yeah. something we need to touch on real quick. Significant others on the podcast or a Friday night hangout. I think it would be difficult for Taylor to have significant others on the podcast because who's going to be watching your kids? Yeah, we'd have to do like a double sleepover at grandparents or something. Yeah, see, my podcast, I'm in my house. So it's super easy for me just to like, my kids are a little older than Taylor. So it's easy for me to do that with my wife at some point. Um, with Taylor, that's a slightly more difficult situation. Friday Night Hangout, so the, the, the new podcast schedule, just so people kind of know, um, we've kind of gone to every other week for a while because it, the, every week was becoming difficult for me and Taylor to, to manage with all the other stuff we had going on in our business YouTube channels and our personal lives and everything else. Um, so we, we dropped to every other week just to make that a little easier. I think the plan is to do every other week for a while until we can kind of get things rolling and get shit back squared away. At some point we may go back to every week. And then we still do the Friday night hangouts the first Friday of every month, right? That's yeah, so the, that's the next week. So yeah. how do you want to? So how do you want to do that then? Um, uh, we'll have to talk about it off camera. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. So 
well, the reason I was saying talk about it is just so people would know if we're beyond next Friday night or not um, that are here now. I don't, I, I don't know. Oh no, it we, would be the week after. Uh, okay, that next works, Friday that works is out. the thirtieth, so it, yeah, it works out timing. Yeah, so okay, so it works out. So next week there won't be a podcast, and then the following week it won't be on Wednesday; it'll be on Friday. Um, Which is so my every mom's other birthday, week. so I'm going to be guilt tripped, but I'll still well, be here. Well, I mean, if you need to fucking do your mom's birthday, man, or can, nah, can you not man, be I, done by eight? No, nah, it's okay. Uh, my birthday is Monday, so how old are you going to be? Like 23, 24? 22. 22? Yeah, twenty two. Yeah, uh 31 dude damn i'm getting old you old fuck you i'll be 43 in may bitch i don't want to hear it 43 in may yeah it's pretty old 43 hence all the patina 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 up in his beard <laughs> i would ask you if what you've got coming up but i think you've pretty much covered it so far uh, uh got i think new so shirts and videos coming yeah. I think all the sm- all the smoking videos and stuff are coming uh there's also an espresso machine uh thing coming new shirts on the website the flasks are back in stock for everybody that's been asking me i'm sorry we're trying to get more of the glens uh back in stock we've ordered them there is like apparently a worldwide glen karen shortage um it's like a fucking issue uh maybe because the glens are so popular also partially because of the corona i don't know but uh it's taking a lot longer to get them back in stock than we thought uh but we do have them on order and i think we should have them in stock within the next two to three weeks hopefully hopefully somewhere in that range don't hold me to the date but they are coming soon but like i said the flasks are back in stock though and then the uh, shirts are all new and uh I'm going to be dropping those special editions of the man cards where I patina but I don't know if anybody will see those other than my Patreons because I'm going to offer them to the Patreons first and there's only a few available. So, but that's what I've got going on. So the other day, like, because every time we do this, Jeremy's got like eight things coming out and all this other stuff. And I'm like, uh, I still have the same shirts up on my, my website. Dude, me, if you see how much shit Pete's dropping, that yeah. guy drops shit like daily. It's amazing. I did a count the other day. Uh-huh. Uh, I have 16 products in the works right now. 16. Holy shit. That's a lot. That's that's way more than I've got. 16 products. And they're all just kind of like in limbo, not moving forward. Uh, But some of them are making progress. So that's good. Getting there. But 16 products that will happen this year. Has Corona fucked you up on any of it? No. Time management, having a newborn. um, Uh working around the clock and being very bad at communicating you know the usual things well because i know the 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 cigar journals that i'm trying to get done i was trying to get them out by father's day because i think it'll be a really cool those journals are going to be awesome but we're having some real supply chain issues because places are being shut down with corona and shit's happening and like yeah we're just there's a lot of issues with corona right now so Um, a lot of the hang up for me is that I I want a direct hand in the design process on a lot of these things. So a lot of stuff, and this is not a knock, obviously. We've talked about this, mm-hmm. you know, between ourselves. You you can like your Zippos. Mm-hmm. That's an, an existing product. You put your logo on it. My first one was an existing product, the TPT slides. I put my logo on it. Right. Easy. But there are several when things parents, that I'm working on. Existing thing. Right. Yeah. Um, there are several things I'm working on right now that I am designing. I have a 3D rendering app. I'm actually designing this stuff and it just takes time. Uh, Iterations, I'm on like iteration nine of the slingshot. Well, here's the thing, right? And even the stuff that I did do from the ground up, right? Like the whiskey glasses, we designed these from the ground up. Flask, we designed all this stuff from the ground up. This is all, you know, but it's not crazy technical stuff, right? I mean, it's, it takes some time and there's definitely many prototypes and stuff like that. But dude, you had a fucking flashlight that had a million moving parts and like yeah. circuit boards and shit. Like that's way more complicated than yeah. we you know went what through, I mean? like, I think 18 iterations and then <laughs> scrapped it. We're just right. like, nope, not, right. not that not happening. So right. hopefully right. that doesn't happen again, but there, yeah, there, there are 16 products in the making right now. Not all of them with exclusive. Um, in fact, about eight of them are not with exclusive, I think. So I'm working on a lot of stuff and there's a lot of wheels spinning, but 
not not a lot of traction just yet, but uh, you'll see some stuff soon. Let's see if I can tease one. Nope, I don't have it on me. I can't tease it. Oh, well, sorry guys. Oh, uh, well, one of the talking. collaborations I have coming up on Carry Commission. Oh, nice, dude. Well, little, little Carry Commission action. Little I'll I'll, commission. I'll I'll give you a little bit of a teaser. It's a little toasty. That's all I'm gonna say. A little toasty. Yeah, I'll show you later after we get off. Toasty, huh? Yeah. Little toasty. Some people will know what that means. Toasty. You dirty I mean, tease. <laughs> like, when I think when I think toasty, the only thing I can think of is like lighters, toasting cigars. But that's just where my brain goes. But I know you don't do a lot of cigar stuff, so <laughs> like I, I can't nope. think of. Has toasty. nothing to do with cigars. Toasty. Hmm. Yeah, it's a little toasty. A little toasty. Oh, it. You're gonna like it. Jeremy, you're going to like, I'll send you a picture of it. Oh, I'm sure I will. <laughs> yeah. Toasty. Okay. Anyway, that's a good place to wrap this up. All right. Thank you guys for sticking with us for almost three hours. As every, we always, we always do almost three hours, man. That's, that's like our when norm. we started this. Do you remember when we started this podcast? We're like hour and a half. Like, that's good. We don't want to go over that. Here's the thing. We probably could, but what we need to do is if we want to make them a little shorter. We need to start going into comments like, way earlier like way when we earlier getting off topic. <laughs> right right because what happens is we do an hour hour and a half we do a half hour on topic an hour off topic and then another 15 minutes of dicking around then we start taking comments and do another hour of comments right we need to start taking comments way earlier and then um we can make them a little shorter if need be um just a thought well if you guys are listening to them that's all that really matters we're right. here to have fun so that's it all that really matters. But uh, if you want to follow us, everything for following Jeremy and myself and the podcast is down below in the show notes. Um, that's really all we got for now. We will be back in two weeks on a Friday, not a Wednesday, because it'll be a Friday night hangout. And that's we will right. see you guys then. You're going to hit patina, some patina, 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 patina. 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 Oh, it's just patina. Okay. It wasn't like something about me like biting ass. Every time we go in there, they yep. get in somebody's ass. Yep. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.